And all of a sudden, it took... Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up, my brothers? How you doing? Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Chop It Up. Please what's like up, and subscribe. Man? Gentlemen, what's the deal? What's going on, brothers? Good, good to man. see you guys again. Good, good, good to see you guys again. Before we and start that's right, D. Like and subscribe, y'all. Like, like and subscribe. And subscribe. Find us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and uh, YouTube, and Spotify, and Apple Music. But before we start off, I want to give a big shout out to our brother, Derek. Today's Derek's birthday. Happy born day, my brother, man. We love you, man. Happy you know, birthday, kid. Happy birthday, every birthday. And my man behind you, about to come out and give you a little gift. Oh, right there, you know what I'm saying? He did a little cameo. <laughs> man. We like a jacket out here. He said, he said, you can't get all the shine on your birthday. He said, you had to show off with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Derek, since it's your birthday, man, I want you to start off and tell us how it was your week, bro. Yo, man, you know, this is a really dope week for me because, um, you know, anybody who knows been following the, sto uh, the show, at least, you know, I always talk about my family. I always talk about my son. You know, especially my oldest, he's in the Navy right now, so I got a chance to talk to him again. He's on his way down to Pensacola. Uh, he's in Pensacola right now, about to start A school at the at the beginning of uh, February. And um, and I had my first little taste of fatherhood today, like post, you know, like post childhood. Like mm. he called me. He's off my he's off my cell phone plan. <laughs> he went ahead <laughs> and he bought his own cell phone. And I tried to keep him on there, but you know, it's so funny. T Mobile was not having it. They were not, they were not, uh, they just weren't helping me out. You know what I mean? I, I was like, oh, son, I got a new plan. You do a new phone, and you know how you do it because they give you a new phone. Yeah, you got a new phone, you can stay on. I could think it's cheap or whatever. It just was not, uh, they were not helping me out, man. And we had to, he finally had to. He had to finally had to cut the cord, man. Had to get his own phone. Get his. He's on AT and T now, and I'm like, all right. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. But um, but yeah, but but you know that's but that's that was my thing today, man. And um, you know, hey, thanks, Lisa. I, I like I, Lisa. Yeah. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lisa. And um, and um, and you know, so that was my first little taste of him being an adult, like completely. And I know I probably won't see him. He probably never live under my home, under my roof again. But you know, but uh, you know, I ain't wanted to have a wife. Hey, that's, hey, that's good. Not under the roof, man. That's a lot of bills. You saving a yeah, lot of money. Yeah, yeah, it's true indeed. It's true <laughs> yeah. indeed. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm a proud dude, man. I'm very proud of him, man. He's nice, man. Congratulations. Please, I'm trying good. to get some of these cats out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Ron, how was your week, brother? How was your week, man? My week was good, D. You know what I'm saying? I mean, first of all, I want to wish. Derek, a happy birthday. That's Thank number you, one. Thank you. Thank you. And I also want to apologize to uh, Calvin and Derek because I had to cancel on dinner, you know. But I'm, oh, I'm going to make that up to y'all. We're going to reschedule that for this week, and we're going to get it popping. That's what's happening. But, um, beautiful place. Though. Yeah, my, my week was, was pretty a, good. It was, a, it was a beautiful uh, suggestion, though, man. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going, we're going to do it again. We're going to, be do it. We're going to definitely do it again. I love, I like this but um, my week was pretty good, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> me and D had an interesting um, visit at the barbershop yesterday. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I know what people think, and they say, you know, look at these two ball guys going to the barbershop. You know <laughs> I don't know, man. I just, you know, we got my shit trimmed up. I got my shit trimmed get, up. Yeah, you got to get your face <laughs> trimmed up. And sometimes you got to be connected to what's going on in the barbershop, exactly. the rhetoric and everything. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Me, and D, me and D was in there when we was talking about the uh, vaccine. And um, one of the brothers said they took the Motorola vaccine. And I, I said the Motorola. I said, "Do you remember?" Know he looked at me. He looked at me. I looked at D, and I said, "You mean the Moderna?" He goes, "Yeah, I took that too." <laughs> Yo, that's why you got to go to the barber shop. There's a lot of, there's a lot of funny shit in there. A lot of funny shit. Yeah. A lot of funny shit. Yeah. Lot of funny shit. He took the Motorola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, but other than that, everything's good. My family's good. You know, my son did. My son went back to school. I took him back to school. 
rode up there and had to, you know, have all that luggage in the car and stuff. But, you know, he's doing good. He's settled in and everything's good. They go, my man right there. They go, my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but other than that, everything was good. Though. That's good. Kelvin, how was your week, man? My week was good. I had two auditions this week. So um, one of them was I'm up for a part in Roots the Musical. <laughs> and then um good times the movie. So we working on we working on that. Right we working, we working. Yo, you know first of all, good times should be the musical. And freaking <laughs> roots should be the movie. Yeah, man, might- you can't do a musical yeah. with roots. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I was thinking about that. What would you do if somebody came out trying to make roots a musical? You know they <laughs> protest outside. Somebody home was talking about hmm. DB outside. Yeah. With Derek is right. Somebody, that's a, to somebody, that's a great idea. He's right. I, I don't want to see. I don't want to see any more movies like that anymore. I'm no, good. I'm with you. I I, I, think got, I got you. I I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I don't want to see any more twelve years of slave, none of that shit anymore. I, All right, you. let me let me say. I'm gonna say how my week was, <laughs> and just so I don't wind up incriminating myself, I'm gonna say this in a hypothetical. I'll just ask this question: If you have stray cats around your house in your yard all the time, and you happen to, um, I'm not talking about myself. I'm just saying in general, like leave poison out. Oh, 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 no, don't do that. I right, didn't say me. I'm not talking Mike. about me. That is I'm Mike. talking about somebody <laughs> like me. So what I'm saying is, if let's say you just try to poison um rodents and then stray cats happen to eat it, is that illegal? Ooh, bro. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't even want you to ask the question. I don't know. I love cats. So I'm I'm big I'm a big yeah, dude that loves cats. I love cats. I, 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 I love all animals. I love all animals. DC brothers, man. I, 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 I love cats. So the reason you got to keep cats around. I live across the street from a lot. I right. feed the stray cats because I don't want the cats. I don't want the mice in the house. Right. So I, I, I keep the cats around. So I'm a, yeah, I'm a I'm cat. just, you know I'm just saying that hypothetically. I'm not talking about like how to do that. I'm just saying I like the stray cats in my yard because I hate like I hate when I put garbage out. And then it like stays in the bag, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I like it's like 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 you know, yeah, man, chef everybody yeah. creatures that come out yeah. right. That's what I'm saying because it helps them all eat. So that's why. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody. But, but yeah. you know, but the week was good though. Other than that, <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. So so Kelvin, you just want to know this in case a neighbor does something like this. You want to know if it's right, illegal, right? Because I see them doing that because the okay. cats go in the other yards and everybody is is not is as cat friendly as I. Am. You know, and he, yeah, and the answer, the answer, I know. Kelvin loved the cats. Kelvin loved the cats. <laughs> yeah, the who answer does, to you, who doesn't love pussy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, yo, pussy so good, women love it nowadays. Yo, let me say this. <laughs> let me say this. Are there any sponsors? That's all I know. If they are, the sponsors that left the building. Oh he God. was better off with the poison. Oh my God. <laughs> No. Oh, man. Oh, man. No, my uh my week was it was it was emotional because like uh, we laid uh yesterday my friend's son to rest uh and today we laid my cousin to rest and this is kind of different because you know with the funeral things now Kel, I don't know if Kelvin if you've done any funerals lately but you know you, people got to go in and you got to leave out and you try to give respect to the family and stuff and this kid's funeral yesterday and my cousin's for I understand I didn't get to attend his because it was in Maryland right. uh you try to leave respect for the families because you. You know they want to pack more of their family in, more of their people in, but you got to rotate. And it's kind of it's kind of funny with the social distance and thing like that. So yeah. it, it was it was just an emotional last two days. But and shoot, I got another funeral on Tuesday to go to. But otherwise, life was good, man. I'm here. I'm here with you guys, and we chopping it up. So we, I'm good. I'm good. Up, yeah, yeah. Up, you know? So the next this segment now we changed this segment to a new. We gave it a new title. This is called the chopping block, right? Mm. So on the chopping block this week we have. Still, Capitol Hill chaos, gentlemen. Because uh, uh, oh, that's right. Should we go to producer Jamie bringing out on that segment right now, Jamie. That these people were so unafraid of the cops, who were sparsely distributed through our capital, which hasn't been breached since 1812, when it was burned. The reason they could easily and casually with their cameras on, film themselves throwing things through the walls of our Capitol, our property, going inside the Capitol, sitting in uh, Speaker Pelosi's office, casually take pictures of themselves, have that played on Fox News. They know that they are not in jeopardy because the cops are taking selfies with them, walking them down the steps to make sure they're not hurt, taking care with their bodies, not like they treated Freddie Gray's body. 
White Americans aren't afraid of the cops. White Americans are never afraid of the cops, even when they're committing insurrection, even when they're engaged in attempting to occupy our capital to steal the votes of people who look like me. Because in their minds, they own this country, they own that capital, they own the cops, the cops work for them, and people like me have no damn right to try to elect a president. Because we don't get to pick the president, they get to pick the president, they own the president, they own the White House, they own this country. And so when you think you own it, you own the place, you ain't afraid of the police because the police are you and the police reflect back to them. We're with you. You're good. We're not going to hurt you because you're not them. Guarantee you if that was a Black Lives Matter protest in D.C., there would already be people shackled, arrested or dead. I'm gonna drop the yeah. mic on that. Drop yeah. the mic. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Joy Reid. What I noticed, like, she is just the consummate professional for me because I've seen her present news before, and this was completely different. You know what I mean? Like this, someone, and 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 I want to shout out to those people, whoever her boss is, or whoever her producers, whoever's up top. They gave her the green light. They gave her the green light because she, I, I believed her. And they like said, listen, Joy, go out there and speak your, you know what I mean? Speak your piece. Go out there and speak your truth. And she did it, man. And she did it. And um, and it's very rare to see on television. It's very, very rare to see that. And mm -hmm. I believed her, man. And I'm like, man, that is a beautiful, that's an incredible thing for me. It's very empowering to see. Man. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. That was amazing. At least, that was at least, amazing. At least it's right. She's, the, she's, she's super dope, man. The realest one out there, man. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and Rod, that's that's what I want to say. With, you know, the white man going after the, you know, the other white man was similar. Well, actually, cops. So now you know how they had to say black on black crime. Should we call this police on police crime? Might as well. You know, might as well. The thing <laughs> is, too, they um these these investigations that um the FBI doing, they're uncovering that they were actually off duty police officers out there in the riots. They also found out too that they were. Um, NYFD uh, mm -hmm. firefighters that were out there as well. Yeah, so yeah. you know, it doesn't surprise me. You know, I did tell you guys last um last episode. I said there's going to be a lot of openings in the uh, Capitol <laughs> Police, and you know, a lot of people going to lose their jobs outside the Capitol Police too. But um, to show proof that you know there's jobs opening, they just hired Craig and Day Day from the um Friday afternoon <laughs> to um top to take to, to their top. top Top flight security, they're gonna take over the watching the Capitol. But you know, I wanna I wanna take a second and I just wanna say I don't wanna make it seem like I'm beating up on the Capitol Police. There were a lot of Capitol Police that um was out there doing their thing. They was out there fighting with them, they was out there macing them, you know, that that type of stuff. Because the thing is, my experience from the police department, yeah, you're gonna have your bad apples, but there's majority of the guys are gonna be out there doing their thing, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of people, um, like I said, there's a couple of cases now in the um, NYPD, a um, couple of um, departments along the country. I think they even had um, one guy that actually resigned because social media is the new police. All the yep. evidence is on social media, you know. Yep. And everybody doing everything for the likes. They tell themselves. That's right. They tell themselves. What I, what I, when I, when I was thinking about this, and I, was, I think I might have mentioned it with my other homeboys, that this, that when they say the FDNY, all these people caught up, it doesn't surprise us. Who, no, it doesn't surprise. Who, who threw the water hoses on the people back in the sixties? Yeah, the fire department. The fire department, right? Mm -hmm. The cops were there; they threw the dogs on them. So mm -hmm. none of this to surprise any of us. The politicians, they were smart enough to wear hoods back in the day where they could breathe through. I don't know why they can't breathe through a mask now, but they could breathe well, through the hoods back then. So maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe the, maybe the little holes gave them better uh, ventilation. I don't know, but it is, it shouldn't surprise anybody that white men are just using a playbook they've been doing for decades. Yeah, Central, well, you know, so. The the right. reason for the the reason for those white hoods back in the days is because those people in the clan were people in the community. They were your store owners, they were the police officers, they were the businessmen. And if as you can see in this, like people that's getting in trouble, you got real estate um people, you got doctors, you got bankers. There's a whole bunch of people that were involved in that riot that you would consider to be outstanding upstanding people, but they but they're not. You but know, you know, but you yeah, know, it's interesting. Yeah. First of all, I mean, I think we just have to all recognize that the country was founded by racist people. The country was founded for white people and um, based on supremacy. 
that's mm-hmm. what it is. So, if you, so as Dee mentioned the 60s and you mentioned in your previous times, every era of black people have had to fight this oppression for every era of white supremacy. Mm-hmm. I think the mm-hmm. difference now is this. It feels different that we have more information now than we've ever had. Correct. We have more, you know, resources and knowledge now than we've ever had. And also there's a pendulum that's swinging. They can tell this is almost like the last stand. And you right. only have less than two decades before the entire map is flipped upside down as far as race is concerned. So I think this is the last stand. And I think that's what we saw at the Capitol. So it, it's just inflamed now. And one, one person told me this week, one of my cousins, he was like, you know, if you think this is Trump, he's like, you're missing it. He, they just made him the face of this thing. This thing is mm-hmm. so much bigger. Exactly. So much bigger. Right. He's just a mm-hmm. pawn. He's mm-hmm. just a pawn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The thing is, Trump, Trump basically, we, we, we had two years of our first black, I mean, two terms of the first black president, right? And, you know, in the country somewhat kind of pulled the cover over racism a tad bit, but then Trump came in and pulled the covers off. Mm-hmm. Right. Know? And that's right. basically what it is. And what we saw at the Capitol is, you know, a certain, a certain percentage of white America that's in fear of losing their position or ownership, as they say, in this country. They saw Georgia flip as a result of black people, Detroit. They also saw, um, what's the, Pennsylvania with Philly and all that stuff. And that's what this is about. Basically, black people help get their leader out of office. And yeah. that's why they're so angry. Yeah. That's yeah. why Trump is so angry, too. That's yeah. why he wants to overturn certain things. Because and Damien's and, and Dame right. He is the scapegoat for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's they the scapegoat. Yeah, they don't even, but see, back to that point you was making, Rodney, they don't even, uh, that same percentage, or much of that same percentage, doesn't own the country. Doesn't own the country. No. You know what I'm saying? They believe they either believe they do, or they need you to be something else. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just so that so so it's it's not making it's not adding up and it's not making sense. And the funny thing about it, and they, and and they're they're attacking everything. They're attacking the police. They don't care what's in the way. There was a police officer who said, um, you know, uh, he wanted to, like he was being attacked by the rioters, and he said, you know, uh, he wanted to thank because certain amount of them they protected him. Okay? The, the certain part of the, the crowd that protected him. But mm. then he said, you know, he said, thank you for helping me out. But then, you know, but at the same time, he's like, fuck you for being out there. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So kind of like, so, yeah. and, 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 that's, and that's it in, in a nutshell. And, he, and, and, and mind you, these are the same people. A lot of these are the same people who are, you know, Blue Lives Matter people. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah. think about that for a second. And what are you really talking about? Yeah, you know? Blue Lives Matter was out the, out the window that day. Matter that day. No, yeah, no, no, matter that no, day. no, no, no. And then lady that, people, go ahead, bro, go ahead, Rodney. Now, now you heard people yelling out to the cops um at, at that at that riots saying that basically, oh, we 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 stood by you guys talking to the police, you know, basically telling them that they shouldn't be in their way to let them do this, get out the way yeah. because yeah. we we supported you, you know. Basically, we supported you in a wrong. But right. the Capitol right. Police, the Capitol Police didn't have anything to do with that situation, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But you know. It, it is what it is, but like it, yeah. I think what Calvin said was dead on spot. Calvin said this is this is about white supremacy. Yeah, and the this lady that I got, do know, go ahead, go ahead, D. No, the lady that got shot, right? Come mm-hmm. to find out, she was in serious debt. She had like you know, it was uh, I think Lyndon Johnson said it, it always gave somebody to blame, right? So so they the white man is always looking for somebody to blame for that for whatever problems they had. She was in so much debt, she was blaming the the politicians for all her debt, but she didn't want to sound those crazy ass. Predatory loans that you had Democrats who try to fight against predatory loans, mm-hmm. and she signed what I think the, it was a crazy, wild percentage. I mean, it was more than twenty percent. I think it was like maybe close to seventy percent on this loan. So she's mad about that, and I think that's most of these white men are out here that they can't bring back their little coal mines. They don't want to go with modern technology and like they, let me go get some mm-hmm. wind chimes. I mean, wind term turbines and and all and, and all this other stuff. They don't want to do that stuff. Now they they figure like I'm white, I should just get this shit. This should mm-hmm. be my shit. And like, you know, no, no, motherfucker, you got to work for some shit. More, more black and Latino women are most uh, entrepreneurs out there in the world, in the country right now. Yeah. So yeah. those kind of things, they like, like, why can't it be me? No, yeah. work. Yeah. Pull, up your, pull up your bootstraps now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> for a second, though, like, like, if you consider for a second, this is the country and it's predominantly white and either everything from the educational system to uh, the judicial system, everything is set up and skewed in a certain way for your benefit. Now you have to come around and learn a different way because they, so you, you've done everything that they told you. Because remember, they got taught certain lessons too. So they've done everything that they were told to do. 
You know what I mean? And and whites, you know, set up a certain way for white supremacy. They told them, listen, you got to do X, Y, Z. The whole thing was planned out for them. They did X, Y, Z, whatever. And now their systems are being dismantled. You know what I mean? Due to necessity. Mm -hmm. I mean, life goes on. The world keeps moving. It keeps revolving. You have to upgrade your skills. You have to learn and learn how to adapt. And they never learn how to do that. So now mm -hmm. what do you do? You know what I mean? You're a middle-aged person. You're sitting around. You did everything X, Y, Z. They moved your job over here. They did whatever. You know that. You know, and you don't know how to react. You know, and what happens? You go out there. And you, you know, and you wind up at the capital, tearing up your life, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> but so, but how, the the question is, why does that point to us? And that's the thing that's always we're the scapegoat. So, yeah, always that's, that's the, the right. That's the that's the problem. I was driving today, right. and I actually saw a, a billboard, a digital billboard that said, "If you know anybody that was a part of the Capitol riots." There's a one eight hundred number you can call. Yeah. I mean, you can email. I didn't, and that's in New York, and that was that was amazing. Like that, I mean, I looked at one guy today. He's an attorney, just got fired, and I'm sitting there saying, like, okay, so you didn't overthrow the government, you didn't reverse the election, and you got fired, and you probably going to jail. I just don't mm -hmm. see where the win is at. I, I just don't see where the planning was at. And so, if you yeah. did get inside the Capitol, what you did. What were you going to do? Change the ballots? Like, you change what the Senate was going to vote? Exactly. What were you going to do? I'm saying that was the plan, and you're going to just, then what, uh, Trump is going to be the king now? Like, I, I don't even understand how you had people out there um, that came up with this ridiculous plan of, 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 of like, was, anarchy or something. And it was, it was, it was, it was no they had, they had, they had this, this one lady, and they was like, you know, they, they put a microphone in, in her face, and she's, Crying and everything. It's like, well, what were you doing? Then, well, why were you there? We were starting the revolution. Like it was a party yeah, or something. Yeah, bro. yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. Like, did you hear what you just said? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Do you hear what you just said? Yeah. You know. We do realize that some of these people ain't ain't all there. You know, they yeah, got yeah, all yeah. And, and they do I get it. Yeah, too yeah. to put them on, put on camera. That's no, like you said. It's got right. so many people on there on social media because, like me and D, always talk about this all the time. We say social media is undefeated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. If, you, if they want to get you, you on social media, somebody sees your face, they're going to turn your ass in. And that's what's right. basically happening to most of these people. People right. are getting turned in left and right. But they have the so, ultimate constellation prize. You still have an elderly white male who's taking the White House. Like, that yeah. should be enough right there. You still have that in place. You still have somebody that looks just like the people that laid out the Constitution. Yeah. So I don't understand why it's such a problem. It's but, such a culture shock. You know, Trump, they, uh, Trump they has to right. believe yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave, right, Dave, Dave Chappelle said it well. You come get these nigga lessons, and that's what they got. Yeah, they exactly. Got, they got yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, they and still that, but they still didn't get it the way they really could have got it. No, no, they, they, they no, they, they walked. They, got, they walked away. They walked away from it. That's what they didn't yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, Now they got lawyers and stuff like that. You know, you got yeah. over 100,000 100, people getting caught out there. With, you know, crazy, with videos crazy, and all of that stuff, and people and the people in their neighborhood that don't believe in like, no, I was down in New Bern, New Bern, North Carolina, and you can see like different signs. You see a Trump sign. Then you see a, a Biden sign and stuff like that. You see a Black Lives Matter sign and Blue Lives Matter. Those people with those Black Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter signs on it, they're telling on these people like, oh, that's John so and so, and they snitching on them. And, I, and they should tell yeah. them. They should yeah. tell them, you know? Yeah, yeah. You got people turning, they, telling on their um, parents. And oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. That was, that, was, that, that, was, that was deep. That was deep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I talked to somebody. Somebody said, oh, the daughter snitched on the, the mother and the uncle. I said, she didn't snitch. She told. She wasn't part of that. She told. That's the difference. Snitching and telling is two different things. I tell people. You know, but, yeah. yeah. And now they're trying to cop out. Like Lisa said, they're trying to cop out because they're trying to say Trump ordered them to do this. Correct. That's a new, that's going to be their defense. Yeah. <laughs> that's in new, court. That's they were just listening. They were Trump. listening to the commander in chief. That's what, that's yeah. what a lot of their defense is going to be in court. Well, you but know, let me tell you one thing. Who's going to make out the most in this are going to be lawyers. I mean, that's why lawyers are scooping oh, up yeah. their cases yeah. like crazy because they're going to make a ton of they money off these money. losers. Yeah. You know what I mean? A ton of money off these losers. But yeah. the other you thing know? is there's a lot of people that took tours the day before they're saying, so they want to see that there's some culpability with the people that actually worked in the Capitol because they said there's mm -hmm. an inordinate amount of people that took the tour the day before and because they they, they kind of knew that building a little better. I mean, this yeah. wasn't the first time they were there. So they came in that week and they went back to hotels to get people that where they stayed at, all these different things. I will say they are going to make an example, it looks like, because you can't let this yeah. go. Well, they no. suspended, they suspended, they sus I think they suspended over 18 um, Capitol Police already. Oh, really? Yeah, they've been, been spent. Like I told you, there's going to be openings. Yeah. There's going to be opening. Craig and Day Day is in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and, it's, and, the, and the thing is, about, when you look at Trump, right, and his messaging and everything like that, 
he really wanted to be a dictator. Where you, he wanted to control the media, just like all the other dictators. Where you could shut off the biggest thing is the first thing they do when you go to a country, right? You shut off the you shut off the you shut off the the broadcast from radio, right. television, any kind of way, so people can't get the message. And that now that his tongue's been cut off from him, cut off from him, I, I wonder where he's gonna go at and how it's gonna go. But I'm glad they shut him off because he was becoming a real dictator, and a lot of people profited off him doing this. Twitter profited off him. All this cable TV shows, they made a ton of money on it. Now everybody say, "Oh, this this motherfucker went too far. Let's cut his legs off now." But it's like kind of too far. You got the my pillow bitch dude. He's still up yeah. there sucking cock, sucking Trump's cock. And then you whoa, know, whoa. and then because the watchman called cut off. Oh no, I'm sorry, but yeah, that's words are coming out of my mouth. Don't reflect his, his name. His name is Mike. <laughs> is Mike Lindell. Mike Lindell is the Mike pillow, Lindell. My pillow guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm glad that uh, well, the Under Armour dude broke shop early. He's like, "Yo, I don't want this smoke. Black people wear my shit." <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you yeah, something. Right? Price later. Right. <laughs> yeah. First first of all, uh, the 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 stock price on Twitter just freaking crashed as a result of freaking get rid of Trump. It, mm-hmm. it 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 plummeted. Um, the thing is, don't don't like kind of like you see all these people jumping ship on Trump, all these companies and stuff like this. Now, the four years that he was in office, none of them jumped ship on right. during the whole four years. So they probably. Towards the end of his term, they're probably thinking, hey, we got to disassociate ourselves from this guy because we got to get with the new administration because we got to keep making money. Mm-hmm. So the bottom line is the capital thing came along at the perfect time for a lot of people to say, oh, here's our reason to jump ship. We could yep. be out. Yep. You know right. what I'm saying? Yep. And, 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 and that's really what it comes down to. It's about people, you know, being in with whoever's in at the time. You know what I'm saying? Trump was in, so we're going to be on his ship. Now we realize the Democrats are in power, so now we got to conform to what they want because we need to keep making money, or mm-hmm. they may make laws that can hurt us financially. Mm-hmm. You know? But that's what it all comes down to. So don't, don't, we're not going to get caught up saying, oh, Twitter banned them. They should have been banned them. There's a whole bunch of other things I could tell you during his term that he should have got banned for. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, Man, you know, I, that's I, what I, it's I, about. Let me tell you something. I had a family member got, uh, Got, got suspended from Facebook for saying vitamin D was good for you, man, during COVID. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so I feel really? like, you know, really? So, yeah, man, I'm telling you, you just, you gotta, you, who knows? So, is vitamin, vitamin D not good for you? Is that? I don't know. Ask good. me what the criteria hey, I've been, is. I've been, I've, been, I've been in Facebook jail quite a few times. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I understand the pain. I say some shit and I always wind up in Facebook jail. So, it's, it's all good. Welcome to me. You know, I'm, I, yeah, I'm a three time fella. <laughs> Yo, you know, you out, man. What's you, know, going on? You, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we got like Trump second impeachment. Any thoughts, guys? Say Look, say that again. What was the question? Trump second impeachment. Any thoughts? I'm still I'm letter. I I'm still letter. Um, I mean, they made I, sure they buried him in the history books. I mean, correct. That's, really, that's what it was about. That's yeah, what they, the I mean, they, they decimated him. It's one of those situations where any honor that you had for running for the office. Any honor that you have to get elected to the office is all a race. It's like I'd say it's like an honor, a dishonorable discharge from the military. Right. It stays with you rest your life. Yeah, and nobody looks at you the same. And I mean, at the end of the day, and now I don't know if you heard about um, I think it was um, Deutsche Bank, I believe it is, uh, cut him off. His, his largest bank that, that funds him, they cut him off. So you know, but but to have that second impeachment, mm. especially for what he had it for, and let me say. The fact that he's getting blamed with this attack on the Capitol, um, he will go down in history as the worst president in the history of the United States and the most dangerous no, uh, with, with no close second. With no well, close second. Hang on my thing. He didn't own slaves. So I don't give a George Washington slavery, slavery no more. That's all. He would have tried. <laughs> the man's father tried. The greatest one actual slave owner. That's yeah. right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, saw, yeah. I saw a meme on Instagram. <laughs> I saw a meme on Instagram the other, the other day. And it said it had Obama, Bush, and Clinton on the meme. And it says, you're supposed to do two terms, asshole, not two impeachments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought, it, it, I thought it, it was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, you might have yeah. sent me that shit. You might have sent me that shit today, too. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think he's trying to be the, like, you know, the, I think America's trying to turn him into, like, you know, the, the, the crazy cousin that you kind of keep locked in the basement yeah. or something, man. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Trying to forget he ever was around, man. Trump yeah. got a lot of stuff he got to deal with after. He oh, yeah, when he got, yeah, he they gonna break, they gonna break him with that money, man. No, he have no, no go to no more. Yeah. The, the, his two banks held up on him. Let me ask you guys yeah. another, another another question, real quick. Um, these these privileged white dudes that sat on the Capitol now that want to go through the metal detectors. 
Now they understand how our kids that go into urban cities, how they got to go through yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what what are your thoughts on that guy? Well, Nancy Pelosi, um, she implemented a fine. If they don't go through or they, they don't comply with the rules of coming into the Capitol, they're going to get fined. I think it's like ten dollars or $5,000 every time they have an issue with the, uh, yeah. with the metal but detectors. It, they should have metal detectors. Think about this, right? Yeah, they, sh all, they should. They should. All the urban areas that we have had metal detectors. Some of the yeah. some of the some of those Senate members and Congress members that's from rural states, they they're carrying guns. They they got guns on them. I know. So the thing is, like you know, once you see uh, Columbine, those schools like that, what's the other school and Florida had the shootings and stuff like that. After something happens, they have metal detectors. They mm -hmm. should have them now. Like we had the, when the nine eleven happened, right? What yeah. happened? Every, yeah. Before that, everybody go to metal detectors now. Take off shoes. Because this is what violence is going to happen. At. These yeah. terrorists, terrorists, they say allegedly terrorists attacked the airplane through the airplanes, right? Yeah. So we saw these white dudes <laughs> attack the Capitol. So we know these domestic terrorists are coming right to the front door. So they should have them. Yeah. They, right. they, they right. need to have them. You know? Right. You know? Safety is non negotiable. And, and at the end of the day, you know, things keep evolving. That's what it is. I mean, I remember I was in South Africa. We go to South Africa, everything is fine. On the way back, they're like somebody a shoe bomber happened, or somebody brought some lotion or something. And on our trip back, you couldn't bring water on the flight, you couldn't bring lotion on the flight, you couldn't. Be, and literally, it wasn't that when we left two weeks earlier, it wasn't like that. So things evolved and things changed, and you have to change with them. You know, I mean, nobody likes taking their shoes off at the airport, but that one man was the shoe bomber. And after that, that's it. I'm gonna tell you, I don't care what they make you do when I get on a plane. I do want to come back off of it. I want it to land. So whatever happens, right. you know, I have no problem with complying. Yeah. So if you if you go into the Capitol and you need to actually, you know, go through metal detectors and it to keep you safe, I'm with it. Well, somebody, yeah. somebody just said, uh, yeah, somebody just helped out. Said the first offense is five thousand. Second offense fifteen thousand. Yeah. God, I can't, I can't afford bread. the first offense. <laughs> That's a lot of bread. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't even be playing with that. I wouldn't even. No, nah, not me. I, not I, me. I'll tell you the truth, <laughs> Calvin. You got a point there. Like when I fly, I don't even want to see nobody tying their shoes on the plane. I don't even play that. I be watching people, you know, because the thing is, I'm not gonna lay back and let you just blow me up that easy, you know. Right. right. I didn't go down. I hear right. That. right. It, yeah, but so. you're right. It's because management. It's management by crisis. They we have a crisis, yeah. and they have to set new, implement new rules, and would be as a result of the crisis. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And that's always gonna be. And yeah. um. Now, yeah. now, now, Colin Kaepernick doesn't look so dangerous. No. <laughs> Yeah. One knee doesn't look too threatening now, right? What did he, yeah, what did yeah, he, what did yeah. he say before? You know what I mean? It's like, come on, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and we could have bypassed all of this, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not easy it would have been. You know, just listen. Just open your ears and listen, man, what your brother's trying to tell you, man. He's trying to tell you that the, the situation is going on, that there's another mm -hmm. point of view, that, you know, there are other actors in this world, in yeah. this country, who count, who matter. You know, and and just listen. Otherwise, you know, this is what we get, man. You know, this yes. is what we get. Do you know everybody's storming the gate? The whole world is about to turn upside down. We look like a I'm not gonna say the word, we look like a joke, man. You See, know, you know what the problem is what the, the problem with America is this to me. The, the America is is so based on false principles. So if you just say, look, it's a capitalistic society, um, only the strong survive, and that's what it is. But no, we want to paint this picture of, of picket fences and, and, and baseball and, and apple pie and all these different things and being the world's police. We See, always want thing. to get that depiction and the depiction is not true. And that's the reality of it. Right. But that's the thing. We can never say that. We always have to pretend because remember, America goes around all over the world finding, you know, and right. they find the population that is disaffected, give them support and then overturn an overturn government. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, right. So you can't turn around and say, oh, this is a dog eat dog society, whatever, tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? They're like, because then that's like, you have to tell them, oh, you know, this is the American franchise and, you know, this is what things are. And, you know, we have freedom and we have democracy and we have equality and all that. And it's great things to, to you know, it's great to, to, to support. And I believe them, you know, but then you got to believe it. You got to act like it, man, when you're here. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, we, you know, we just as dirty as, you know, I, I ain't gonna say we, that ain't me, I ain't got to do with it, but, you know, they're just, uh -huh. you know, country's just as dirty as any other, man. You know, we just a little bit more savvy with, with you know, with the presentation. That's just, that's right. the difference, you know? Right. So eventually it comes to an end. So yeah, my, what, what, all right, so we now we got, you know, we got, we got, um, we have to, we got, uh, 
everybody gonna be on P's and Q's on their on their P's and Q's right now because uh of what's gonna be talking about tax of the capital. Um, I grew up with uh the the mayor in South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, and I just heard I just forgot about this. And when he became mayor, they wrote, "We don't want a nigga mayor." So we can imagine wow. what's about to happen. Oh well, you know this is a, like I think somebody said earlier in the in the text uh, in a, on the on the chat that this is just a glimpse of what the things to come. So you know, anybody had thoughts on that? Yeah, somebody told me today they were like, you know, you got to be careful on the twentieth um, because Trump supporters are, are going to be attacking people, and um, I, I just think that's going to be a career decision because. I mean, literally, after everything that we have been through, but somebody's talking about attacking you because they don't like the results of an election. Attacking me? It's absolutely absurd. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, All right. Good luck with that. You know, you, right. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's a real that's a real serious accusation um, or or threat to make to people. And I just think it's ridiculous. And it just shows a lot. And, and we always talk about how people can be radicalized and, and blow up buildings or take planes and hijack them. It's no different. It's no mm -hmm. different. We're seeing it right here in our own borders. Yeah. Yeah. They just caught they just caught somebody by the um by the Capitol building with um a couple of guns and stuff. Just recently, I think it was just yesterday. Yeah, he had five hundred rounds. 500 yeah, five hundred rounds. Yeah, five hundred rounds. Yeah, five hundred rounds. And we needed that. We needed. You know what? We actually needed this. We needed it for people to be able to see it, especially right here in this country. We needed for people to be able to see it. You know, words. Mm -hmm. This is a true reflection. You can hold the mirror up against yourself. All over the world, like people say, America don't have beef with nobody who don't have oil. It's, it's everything mm. just seems to be so calculated. And so right now we got things to clean up in our own house and it needs to get straightened out. And that's the reality of it. And that's why and I, I give credit to whoever is advising Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, because I haven't heard a word. They are handling this so seamlessly. They're not getting caught up in the fray. And as soon as they're sworn in, it's going to change immediately how they go and, and, and start to resurrect the country. And they're just trying yep. to make America yep. look back like, like it used to, man. Just You know what I'm saying? They just they, Right now, they just got to clean up the image. They got a lot of work doing, you know, to do just to clean up the image. The, the number one thing is just to project stability. You know what I mean? Like, regardless to what you believe, what your political leanings are, how you feel about them, how you feel about Kamala, how you feel about Joe, at this point, we just need stability. Yeah, you know so, I mean? so we had we had a lot of we had a lot of deep talk, but now um we're gonna go into a we're gonna go into commercial first. Before we go into commercial though, you know, let's chop it up was based on like a barbershop type of thing, right? And every barbershop, one thing we all talk about is hip hop. Yeah, the old school, new school, whatever you want to call it, classic from the videos of everything. So tonight's show, we're gonna have some fun tonight. We went real heavy and deep early, but we got some fun. Right after this commercial, we're going to bring in the hip-hop. So, Jamie, bring us the commercial, brother. Yo, 
Hey, you got, hey, you got, you got the white guy have a white Hennessy cake. Can't be yeah, racist. I, I, I can't, can't be, be dangerous. Can't be, can't be racist. Can't be racist. Yeah. That's a white <laughs> <laughs> so listen, we have we have some special guests coming in today. We got quite a few guests tonight. Um, but our first guest is our brother. He's been on the show before. He's a very intelligent man. He, he you know he talks about leadership. He has his books. He go promote and all that stuff like that. But I I love this guy's opinion when we talk about hip hop. We've been talking about hip hop, me and this dude, man, for at least what on a two de- over two decades now. So with further ado, producer Jimmy, can you bring up my man Anton Gunn? Anton, on, fellas, how y'all what's doing? Up? What's up? What's up, brother? What's up? What's up? What's up, man? How Life you feeling, bang, man? Bang, bang. How about you? Everything's everything, man. Everybody's every, everything is everything, man. Anton, thank you for coming back, man. The catch up, we doing what's going on with you in life right now, man? It's in the twenty twenty one, all is good. Twenty twenty one, man. Uh, business is good, man. I'm, uh, you know, doing a lot of consulting with a lot of organizations who are tr- really trying to figure out how to build a better culture. Now that diversity has to be a conversation in every boardroom, every corporate room right now. So I'm just trying to help them to figure out um, how to build a better culture so that every employee, black, white, Latino, old, young, gay, straight that they feel like they're valued at work and that they deliver for the company. So business is up. I've been doing some work with companies like T-Mobile and uh, Tanger Outlet Malls and Mercedes-Benz Vans. So I'm, I'm starting off a good year with a bang, but hoping to make it the best year ever and really try to make a difference. My goal is to help 1,000 uh, senior executives be better leaders for 100,000 people that they lead. And so I'm really focused on the mission, man, to try to impact 1,000 leaders so they can disproportionately act uh, impact more. Wow. Mm. That's what's up, man. We need you need you in some of these nonprofits up here in New York, man. You need some better leadership. Hang on. But it's another yeah, non-pro- I, I used to be a CEO <laughs> of a nonprofit for seven years. Most people don't don't know that. And it's hard. Most CEOs so focus on chasing the money to get the money in the door right. that mm-hmm. they forget about taking care of the people that work in the organization. Correct. And that's one of the reasons why I had to get out of it because it was, you know. It's hard to develop people when you got to chase donors and get grant money in and go talk to this foundation and beg these other folks rather than just focusing on the mission. So I definitely know it's hard work and I'm happy to help. Anybody reach out, go to AntonGun.com. I'd be happy to help you and your organization get to a better place where you can live your mission. That's that's why I love you, Anton. (laughs) I oh, forgot the big ass Kool Aid smile. Always had that damn Kool Aid smile, man. Kool Aid smile with a big bit of big ass fro back in the day, man. Yeah, Yo, red man but, style. You know, red man. That's why I used to call you red man. Word. So uh, we got Anton. We got yeah. another younger brother though. I'm gonna bring on, man. This brother is really intelligent when it comes to hip hop and just life in general. He's one of the leading brothers. I do with a lot of anti racism stuff with this brother, man. But we always we talk about hip hop all the time. He has a forum that he goes on uh, Instagram. He'll tell everybody about it. Jamie, can you bring in my man Damien, please? Damien, oh, how you uh, doing, brother? Yo, we can't hear you, D. He's on mute, Sam. He's on mute. Yeah, yeah sorry go, about that. How y'all doing? How y'all doing tonight? Good, good, good brother. Good. How brother. you doing, welcome, brother? Welcome. I'm all right. You know, I just want to thank y'all for the opportunity of being on the show. Um, all of y'all support in different ways. So just working with y'all just is always a pleasure. Um, and yeah. I've been listening. Y'all going in. <laughs> yeah, and Damien, yeah, I just want to, before we get started on hip hop, tell tell people about the stuff you do with mentoring and stuff like that with young people. Um, so currently in my organization, I'm the coordinator of mentor services and resource development. So I'm re- literally building a mentoring program for young people. And I'm really trying to develop what I call a mentoring community, where it's not just one person charged to like support one person. It's, we have a community of people. You know how Jay-Z said what's better than one millionaire too? I would say yeah. what's better than one mentor. Two, three, three four. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, so you have You have a community of people you can reach out to when you need that type of support because not everybody can solve every problem. But if you know, if you know how to do the technical thing, you know how to do a law thing, you know how to do medical, you know, you have people that you can reach out to solve a plethora of issues that come up with everybody. You know, it's not just young people, but, you know, right now our focus is on young people and helping them um, access like a community and a support system that can help them through their um, their development, you know, so we can grow some strong brothers and sisters. That's what's up. That's what's Yo, up. Damien, I was very impressive with that. You said plethora. That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> that is deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last, oh person, the last person I heard use that word was Walt <laughs> Clyde Frazier in an interview. You know what's funny? I had to look it up. That's when I learned. I said, oh, I got to look that word up. <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, 
a good friend of me and Demond's. He used it a lot. Uh, he also works with us, Rolling Knight. He's a hip hop artist, and he uses that word in conversation. He's just like, it's oh, a yeah. plethora, and we would just <laughs> laugh because he would throw it out there just just because. Yeah. Nah, I like it. Kid. I like that. I'm I'm gonna start yeah, using yeah. it more. I'm gonna use it on my wife as soon as we get off the show. <laughs> Baby, give me some plethora. I want some plethora. Yeah, I, 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 Yo, I, I got a whole a lot of plethora for you. Yeah, I got a plethora <laughs> for you later on. Uh, so, Jamie, <laughs> let me ask you a question. How much of the mentorship uh, is required, like, in terms of, like, um, how much support do you give them in terms of, like, say, emotional support for young men? You know what I'm um, saying? So how much you see is needed for that? Man, it, you know? it, I... Well, I always say, uh, and I had to redefine like even the, the mission statement. I, I call it the ever changing needs because you know, young people day to day, everybody's going through different things. So I call it ever changing needs. But it all depends on how much they need. If 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 they need a one to one, if they need small group like peer accountability and stuff like that, we try to set that up in different ways. We also have activities. There's a young man right now. I'm hoping to get connected, and you know, maybe if I say it, it'll happen. You know, I just say manifestation and things, but um with with a uh, guy who does videography for like PBS because he wants to learn film and photography and stuff like that. And he he might be able to shadow him. Hopefully, you know, we can set it up in a safe way. And it's like, this is what somebody's going to school for. And if we could set him up with somebody who can like guide him and give him access and potentially even uh, experience in a company like PBS, you know, when he graduates school, there may be a job there, you know, right. and he, he at least might get a recommendation. So right. it's, it's, it's really about, um, one, you want to be around strong, strong, let's say people, not just black men, but, or women, but people that you can, you can grow and be around an environment of like maturity. So you're not surrounded by like, you know, social media and let's say certain type of things that we see on reality TV, that's, that's, that's what your environment is. You're surrounded by mature adults who can be themselves and allow you to be yourself. Um, so it, it, it's, 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 it's a balance of like whatever they need. So if there's some people who need people to talk to, we try to find access for, so they can talk to. If there's somebody who's like, I really just need a job or I need an opportunity or I want to learn more about this, we try to bring those uh, opportunities to them or point them in a direction where they may be able to get access to it. Yeah, so right. this is good that we got y'all both on it because you, I want you and Anton, y'all need to probably like uh, connect in, uh, offline or something like that because y'all both, Anton's a really dope, dynamic brother, nationwide dude, man. Am I, gonna- yeah, I was listening to what he was saying. I was like, man, <laughs> that's a yeah. that's a great so, number that you threw out there. I was like, woo. Yeah, so let's get on this hip hop thing, man. So mm-hmm. I, am I am I only one, y'all hear me on the feedback? I'm going to feedback on my headset, I'm sorry. No, but, um, good. Sorry, so let's, we're going to start with this top ten list. I, me and Anton go at it sometimes. I, I, you know, but and, and Damien too. Me and Damien go at it. I go with Damien like every week. I watch his show every week, and we're gonna talk about his show before the end, before he gets off. Well, girl gets off air. But let's start with the top ten MCs of all time. Anton, you uh, go first. So before before I tell you my first one, let me let me preface my mindset. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm I'm partial to battle rappers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you get into a, a fisticuffs, using, I'm going to use that term again, you get into a, a fisticuffs with somebody uh-huh. on a microphone, it's all about how complex, witty, diverse, mm-hmm. how, how you can be on it all the time. And so you will see that my list is peppered with people that if you put them in a battle against any other MC. Nine times out of 10, they're going to come out on top because of how they rhyme. So that's where it starts, but it's not only battle rappers on my list. I'm really into complex rhyming skills, inside rhymes, people who got got the, the craft mastered. And mm-hmm. uh, and so I'm happy to, to get started and go with my number 10. Let's hear it, brother. We waiting for it. So number 10, I got to go to Staten Island on this one, and that is Ghost Face Killer. Now, I'll tell you two reasons why he is on that list at my number 10. He is the most prolific MC in the Wu-Tang Clan, period, bar none. 13 solo albums, 13 solo albums, and like another eight collab albums, if you will, with other people. Uh, Ghostface is a storyteller like Slick Rick. He's a battle rapper. It doesn't matter the beat. It doesn't matter the sound. He can put it together. Now, I'm going to give you two songs that if you really want to understand the greatness of Ghost that you can just go in and listen to these two songs. Song number one is with De La Soul, 
on their Grind Date album. The song is called He Comes. He throws some bars on there that is sick with it, especially when he's talking about Saddam Hussein's sons. You only, most people didn't even pick it up who he was talking yeah. about. The second one, as I'll just give you the whole album, Ghost Dini, The Wizard of Poetry from Emerald City. Most people ain't even listened to that album. But Ghost is prolific with it. And I just think he deserves that top 10 status because a Wu could be the greatest group of all time. We know Inspector Deck gives the hottest 16, but nobody has done as many albums as Ghost with different MCs. He's, he's done it with everybody. So that's why he's my number 10. Okay, mm. Damien, you're 10. I give you the Ghost. Ghost is in my, in my book. He's right under my 10, though. He's right under. He might be my, like 11 or 12. Well, go ahead, Damien. I'm going to try to keep it short. I don't necessarily have a, a 10 in order outside of maybe my top two, three, but um, I can't even remember what I told you. I think uh, I put Damn, Kane book. as oh, number Kane. 10. Big Daddy Kane is my number 10. Um, I actually believe Big Daddy Kane might have been the best all-around rapper from that era. Better than Rakim. That's an argument. I know people will shoot you in the street. I'm with you. I'm with you. But I'm with you. For what he was able to do and his styles and his ability to flow and how many people he influenced, if you... Soon as you hit like 92, if you don't hear Big Daddy Kane in almost every rapper, I don't know. But he's on my top 10 just having great, great music. His his ability even this day. I think he was on um Instagram live maybe yep. a month ago or yep. something like that. A couple months ago, DeMar put I, he did his whole set flawlessly. I'm like, there's yep. a level of skill and talent that you you can't deny, you know? Mm -hmm. Facts. Um, Mm -hmm. Number nine. Let's go number nine. Then I'm gonna let everybody chime in. I hope you guys are writing down what they're saying. Number, number yeah. nine. What you got? Uh, my number hey, nine. Hey. Uh, my number nine is common pre Erica Badu. <laughs> <laughs> yo. Yo, I, I don't know what I don't know what kind of box Erica Badu has, but yo, she yo, yo. he kills him. <laughs> it, 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 put, it, put spell, it put spells on dudes. Yeah. I know. Yeah, she's selling the right. incense and Candles and shit, and this shit is, and people are buying it. Something yeah. in that shit. I, I don't want that shit is crack. That shit is crack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, the thing is, um, ah, uh, what's the guy's name? Andre, Andre, two thousand, three thousand, three thousand. Yeah, Andre, three thousand. He, um, he got that. She's the reason he dressed like that. Yeah. Okay, so just to be clear, to be clear, what I said about yeah. the cats is wrong. That's not just, <laughs> I, just, I just want to make sure. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Just a second, right? Uh, Damien, Damien, you're number nine. Let's see what you got for your um, nine, This one might be a little controversial, but I put Styles P in my top ten. He's mm. one of the one of my favorite hardcore lyricists, but he's he's great at what he does. But if you listen to what he raps and talks about, he's he's no slouch. He everybody respects him. But also, he had this line in a freestyle on Flex that I was like, I never heard somebody just turn a phrase and catch me off guard like that. It was one of those like. Did he just wait? Y'all just heard that it was one of those <laughs> moments. He said, I got a lot of spirit in me. Check the next sentence. You got more than five senses. You could hear it in me. And I was like, mm. <laughs> good mother God. Yeah. <laughs> Did he just write that? And I, I write. So now I look at somebody else, write something. And I'm like, why well, I don't write like that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he, and that's he why, has a lot of that's great. That's why Tupac can never be in my list. Because he can't write <laughs> never. That's never be in. 20, 25, 35. You're, you're going to have to defend that to the black community, D. You're This, 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 this I'm not going to This is why I said, because when you, when you, when, I need rappers to make me want to rewind the song. Like when yeah, I had back yeah, in the day, yeah. you got to go, Zzz. that's what, yeah. if you don't make me do that, you got to get out of here. Because it's like, yeah, yeah. I could, I could write, I literally could write and connect the words, but you don't have nothing yeah. to make me like, oh shit, did you hear that? D, you're 100% right. Shit. Yeah, you I, I back right. you up like you back me yeah. up, D. I, I, you, I'm on. Yeah. He's not in my ten. He can't be in my ten. He can't you, be you, 20, 25, 30. You got, D, you got that's where you get us in trouble, D. When you go down the whole list and he can't be twenty. Bro, I got twenty right now. Easy, bro. <laughs> he's, he's not, not on that. Put out the list. He's not on the list. He's not on the laundry list. Let me just say this. Everybody from the West Coast. Don't do anything for me. That's all I'm saying. Don't do anything for me. That's all. So if y'all take y'all show on the road, y'all going to avoid it. Right, exactly. Yeah. He ain't even my top five West Coast MC. Exactly. Not even my top five West Coast MC. Word up. Yeah. Yeah. There's people on the West Coast that don't think Tupac is in the top ten. Most people's top ten. He's not. 
Then there, there were a lot of people on the West Coast. He shot some cops. Yeah, he, he, and he got around, and he lived, and he lived, and he lived to tell it he went, too. He, he lived. lived to tell. He went to jail. He did some movies. He's a handsome dude. Hey, that's about it. Listen, that's about it. Let okay, let me let me just say this right. Mm. People may disagree. I've had this conversation before, but to me, Tupac didn't really blow up until he got with Death Row and got with Snoop Dogg. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, that movement helped carry um, Tupac, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. He wasn't carrying it on his own. These guys we talking about, they was carrying it on their own. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, too, D has a valid point. That's the way I see it, too. Remember we used to, when we were young, we'd be in the car and somebody, a record come out, you're playing it in the car and he say something so insane. You'd be like, rewind that, rewind that. Did you hear what he said? If Word. you can make me do that, you are hot. You are hot. Yeah. <laughs> and Tupac never, Tupac never made me do that. Yeah, and my show, we talked about him and I would say Tupac, <laughs> he made some of the greatest, he made some of the greatest hip hop songs. Like Dear Mama, Never Call yeah, You yeah, Bitch, yeah. songs like that. If you did the top hundred songs in hip hop, he might have seven or eight songs on that list. Yeah. But if you do the top thousand, he only got those seven or eight, and then he disappears. Wow. You know, yeah. so it. it's, it's like that. Yeah. But um, so yeah. what, what, what number are we up to now? Eight. Was eight. 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 Yeah. Who's number eight. 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 eight? Number eight is is Black Thought for me. Yeah, I mean, and, and I can just oh. tell you, Funk he can Flex, hang with anybody. He can hang with anybody. Nine oh. minutes and forty-seven seconds. Mm. Nine minutes and forty-seven seconds, non-stop. That's best what I like. Best, best, best freestyle heard ever. Yes, the best. Period. You mm. like yeah. Damien? Yeah, Dalton I forgot Black to. Or, uh, no, I, he should have been up there. I didn't put him in my top ten, but he should be. Um, Slick Rick. I, I still don't know anybody who could tell stories better than Slick Rick. And his flow is still one of the top five flows in hip-hop history. Yeah. Like, he could just give him a subject. He'd just start rapping. It sound like he's talking to you, but it's so slick, so smooth. His delivery is still impeccable. Um, and his, got, voice, his voice. He got his voice. The voice. voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And we, and we um, got a funny comment. We got one funny comment about Tupac. Uh, Brad said, I got two pack right behind MC Snow. Informant. Oh my god! <laughs> that's why I laughed. That, that, that kind of made me chuckle a little bit, man. Smile. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Funny. That's yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah I, I forgot about, that I forgot about Snow. Man. I forgot. I forgot about Snow. That's funny though. Yeah. All right. What's your seven, Anton? Who's number seven? Big Pun. Yeah, Big, Big Pun, Pun is on my list at number mm. seven. Just his ability. I mean, he's the one that you got to rewind all of the time. Yeah, yeah. You got to rewind him all of the time. Anton, let me no. ask you this. Yeah. My one of people, people, a lot of people I talked to, they said they never even heard the song. But Big Pun's favorite song to me was Rib Tips and Grape Soda. You remember <laughs> that song? Yeah, I'm serious. I, I just because the thing is, like, I mean, when I was young back then, I could relate to what he was saying about yeah. standing on the corner yeah, eating yeah, those yeah. rib yeah. tips and grape yeah. soda. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I I just I don't know, but you're right. I you you have to rewind a lot for big. Yeah, Pun. I mean it's sad that his life got cut short. And he yeah, and it was short. One, one hour. Solo. Yeah, one but, hour. I mean, like whatever he touched, like fire water. I mean, fire. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was he, he was incredible. Yeah. I know. Incredible. Yeah. Damien, what do you think about Pun? Or you want to say your seven? It's up to you, man. You um, Pun, Pun is great. I didn't have in my top ten, but I think he had some of the highest potential of any yeah, yeah. lyricist. Yeah. And him, a few others like Big L, a few were cut short that we would have a completely different hip hop um, yeah. scene mm -hmm. and history if a few of these people weren't weren't taken from us or you know they didn't lose their lives. Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah. believe my number seven. What was my number seven? It was a uh, Red Man. Yeah, um, I think Red Man is the probably top five most underrated rappers. He he is the person Eminem said his inspiration is from. So if you love Eminem and you don't like Redman, I think there's a problem in that. Redman has some of the greatest mm. music, entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he dropped a song, Slap the Shit Out You, like a couple months ago. And I sent that song well, around to so many that people. That shit was hilarious. It was yeah. so fun. And the video, <laughs> oh my God. I, but it's just, he, he. I feel like he brings a level of fun and energy that you never, he never left and lost. Um, he could tell stories too. Like the Superman Lover series is is probably the best series in hip hop. It, it has so many tracks and they're all great. Um, and I, I'm not. I might you know get some hate for this, but I think he he kept red. He kept Method Man um, 
career from from disappearing. He did. I think. Okay. I think I, he I, did. I agree. It's my I agree. opinion. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. And Met the Man is a legend. So if you could keep a legend alive, you got to at least be a legend. Listen, Red Man is so good that they even made him a member of the Wu Tang Clan. I oh, mean, how many people get yeah, to yeah. do that? <laughs> yeah. Right, they did. Yeah, Anton, you did. you're number six. Number six, what you got for us? Cool G Rap. Yes. All right. Cool G yeah. Rap. Yeah. Cool G yeah. Rap. I mean, this, listen, I listened to Men at Work just yesterday. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I want you to understand something that I learned watching T.O. Cross on Instagram. When they did the symphony, G. Rap was going so hard that they made yeah. him stop rhyming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He put the rest of the rhyme on the Men at Work. So the whole first verse of Men at Work is the continuation of his flow from the symphony track. Yeah, mm. it's incredible. And then don't get me started on him and Kane's demo tape when they was both rapping over Raw. Oh. I mean that that's ridiculous. Cool G rap is, is none better, man. None yep. better than G rap. Oh, you of yeah. youngest that see this, you gotta if you want to watch hip hop, you better go look at old cool G rap stuff. Cool yeah. G rap oh. is your favorite rapper. Oh. Rap. Yes, he's the best. He's one of the, he's uh, always gonna top five or five or six for me, too. Uh, who's your six, Damien? Um, I believe my six is Scarface. Um, I think he's also another very underrated rapper. His ability to just I think his conviction and honesty and realism like you know he talks some horror stuff and things like that but um his album what's the name of that album um it got five mics in the source it came out maybe 2000 that's one of the greatest albums i ever heard in my life um the payback i think it might, no that might have okay, been one um, of the songs might have been mr scarface no 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 um that, that was, this the first, was, this that was before that i think that. Yeah. No, it was after yeah, Mr. Exactly. Scarface. Um, I, I I'm gonna know, look I know. it up. Give me like one minute. It, it had the, the the song with Jay Z and them. Guess who's back? Um, and, oh yeah, yeah. No. But that album is to me is one of the most uh, impeccable albums I've ever heard, and 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 it's and it and it's very underrated. Um, but it did get the five mics. Um, it I think it's the fix. That's what it's called, the fix. If you ever want to hear Scarface after he blew up. If you go listen to the fix, you will get, I think, what you would want from any hip hop artist from any time frame. Um, so he's up there. He's always been great to me. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. So we got number five. Where we at? Oh, number we five. down to the five. We down to the top five. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, five. before, before I said, I want you to understand. Okay, you got to explain people this. People are going yeah. to hate on this one. Yeah. But here's what I want you to understand. If you listen to his last album that came out this year, Music to be Murdered by, he solidifies his top five spot for me with this album. I'm I'm not an Eminem fan. Let me be clear. Yeah. I don't buy all his albums. I actually, I think I bought the first one, but that was about it. Um, he makes a lot of radio records. Dre kind of played him yeah. up to be this, this kind of cat. But I'm just talking about sheer, sheer battle rapping alone, sheer skills. Of, of how he pays homage to AZ, how he pays homage to Nas, how he pays homage to G-Rap, how he pays homage to Red Man inside his lyrics. This man knows his craft. He knows his hip hop and he respects the game of the music. And he's just done it so well as a lyricist that I had to put him and give him that spot. Okay. All right. I agree with that. That's a good point. Damien. I respect all the baby. points. He just can't be in my top five. I've put... This is not number five, even in top five all time, but he's in my top 10, J. Cole. I look at the new rappers and I'm like, which one of them actually makes music that lasts more than three weeks? And, <laughs> and I'm like, a lot, of, a lot of music nowadays, after the first, the single or the video or the crave or the dance or the challenge disappears, you don't care about them songs no more. I feel like he is, he's been the most, he's been one of the most consistent but also, I feel like his albums have had more substance. Him and Kendrick have had the most substance in their albums in the last decade. Um, I'm a bigger fan of J. Cole than I am Kendrick, but um, they're both like two of the artists that will be up there. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I will put them up there, and I, I would recommend a few songs and albums from him as well if you if you ever want to really sink your teeth into his mixtapes. Yo, uh, like I, I, ha- I have J. Cole in my car playlist. That's real talk. 
That's how yeah, J. Cole is really. I got, I got one of the young cats that I give props to. He's dope. Yeah. But yeah. real quick with Eminem. Eminem, like Snoop Dogg went at him, and I said Eminem really never made music for black folks, Latin folks. Never. Mm. I mean, yeah. I, and, and, I agree. Right across, right across <laughs> over stuff. Yeah, but yeah, it, it I, listen, I, I can understand that, but I see a whole lot of artists trying to emulate the financial success by not necessarily making music for black folks. Because I, know, I get it. You know, I get it. So, and I and I accept their argument, but I would just say this last album after Snoop came at him about that, this last album is literally what he did is to is to prove that he can make music for black folks. And and again, if you haven't heard it, I just say give it one run. I mean, if you I, I had to rewind one song about six times because he did a line about Mike Pence that I was it was it was so twisted I had to rewind it at least six times to make sure I got the whole thing. It was ridiculous. Yeah, so I give it wrong. Eminem, no, Eminem is dope. He's he's phenomenal. Like one of the best freestyles on the BT stuff and all that stuff. Eminem, mm. nope. You gotta be lying to say this motherfucker can't run. Yeah. You have to be got like you just gotta question. be a straight Go ahead. Can I ask, is is uh have y'all heard Buster Rhymes last album? Is the is it better than ah, Buster yeah, Rhymes yeah. last album? So I would put them like par one and two. I mean, okay. it, it's really good. I'm serious. I mean, it's sure. a double album at that. And again, I don't listen to Eminem, but I listen to this one from the first track all the way to the last track. Okay. In the first seven songs, I had to stop and play them back over again before I went through the rest of the album. It was that wow. strong. Wow. That's, that's good because so it, grabbed, last it grabbed your attention. Bust Around's album is fire. I, think, fire. I would say that's the best hip hop album of the year. Right yeah, now, that's that's, that's what my hands thought down. was, and hands down, that's it. Pop up. All right, we'll be up. Do we have the number five? Is Damien's turn? Four, no, no Damien, four. Four. Oh, yeah, four, 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 yeah, yeah. So, my four is Big Daddy Kane. Um, mm. you, you, you don't have a Jay Z in hip hop if you don't have Big Daddy Kane. I mean, Big Daddy Kane put Jay Z into the music industry fully. I mean, he got his start with jazz, but Big Daddy Kane took Jay on tour with him and showed him the game the way Jay elevated the game. So you can't be a fan of Jay-Z if you're not a fan of Big Daddy Kane, and that's why he's my number four. Mm. I'm with Amy. it. I can't disagree with that at all. Um, mine's is Andre 3000. Um, and this mm. is a difficult This is a oh. difficult place to put him in. Oh. Like That's why I say I don't have a top five like that oh. in number. You're gonna take a hit. For, you're gonna take a hit. I hear you, and we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. How did so he make the you say four? it? See, that's the thing. He may not be number four. That's why I was saying my list isn't in order outside of maybe my top three. But he Andre be top 10 to me, <laughs> he shouldn't be I top 20. Oh, he never a made a solo album. Correct. That, He's a part that, of the group. He's part of the group. All right, y'all gotta let the brother uh, make the. That's an argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, yeah, I I cannot, yeah, yeah. cannot refute anybody anything you just said. I cannot. What I say about him is he has never dropped anything near a whack verse. Which anybody in the top ten, you could say that about. He has some of the most creative and interesting lyrics and ab ability to attack ideas and angles. That I've probably, and one of the other people in my top three, I would say, is the other person who does that um, just as well. And there's only a few people, I think, in hip hop that can just rap about random, simple, everyday stuff and make it sound so interesting and crazy. And like, he is one of, to me, like, he's like a poet in rap. And there's not a many of them. Kendrick, I think, is like that. I think uh, a few other people are like that. But, um, Let's say he's not number four if I was to make my personal favorite list, but he's on that 10 list. And now the three that I'm about to give you, that's my three. That's one, okay. two, All right. three. So, so since we have three, since we have three, Anton, he's shaking his head. We're going, this is going to be a further discussion on, the, on another date, man. We may have to, <laughs> this, this is where it's going to get. Anton might have to come on your show, Damien. Yeah. We, we'll have him. Because <laughs> I'm waiting for him to defend this Eminem top five over <laughs> some of the other people he named. And I was like, wait, you put. I did. And, okay. And that's a new addition. Like I said, before I listened mm -hmm. to this last album, he wouldn't have been in that spot. But mm -hmm. after listening to that last album, I'm telling y'all, give it a run. I'm um, give it a run. It's, it's, and, a, it's, it's ridiculous. Okay. And I respect that because I almost put Buster in the top 10 because of that last album he dropped. So I, I can't be mad at you. Correct. All right. My number three, The Blastmaster. 
Mm. KRS1. Mm. Okay. Number three. And he's got 16 albums, 16 solo albums. That's not counting his five BDP albums. So he got 21 albums in the game. Mm. I actually had the opportunity to go in studio with Chris when he came on tour and did an event in Columbia, South Carolina, a free hip hop festival in Columbia and needed a studio. We got him connected to the Boom Boom Room. He went in there and banged out an album on the road. Okay. And you just can't get no more essence of hip hop from an MC than KIS One on the stage, in the music, it all. So in my mind, he's my top three. And he's the one that made me want to educate myself about black culture, about black nationalism, understanding where I come from and my role in society as a black man. So mm-hmm. I got to give Chris that respect. <laughs> Yeah, you got to. Yep, yep. I respect yep. that. That's great. I was gonna say yep. over Kane, but then I was like, you know what? Let me start, start the argument. Um, um, my number three is big. I don't think there is a more talented rapper in all of history than Biggie. I don't know anybody who could do everything as well as he could, and he might have dropped the greatest double album, a oh, damn near perfect double album, and. I don't know anybody who's dropped a double album that's even close to his. I've not heard the Eminem one, so I might, you know, I might change my mind. But mm-hmm. um, his ability to rap, you know, people might, you know, his content and stuff like that is not their cup of tea. But I see the biggie in your background. And, and like, honestly, um, yeah, I don't think there was a more talented rapper overall than Biggie. And, and the music speaks for itself. And, and the poster speaks for it. <laughs> you right, bro. I got the post of Biggie. Word up. Go ahead, Anton. Right, Anton, yeah. shake it and say it. Anton, yeah. two seconds. So, so I, I think Biggie's him. too low. I think Ten Biggie's seconds, though, too low on it. Yeah. I, I love Big. He's in my number 11 on my list. He's right Whoa. outside of my top 10. He's in my number 11. Oh. Yeah. M is five. Oh. He is 11. Yes. Wow. wow. This is yeah. the email for New York Times. Okay. <laughs> All of y'all need to check your New York bias. Okay. Oh. Check your New York bias. Oh. Oh. He hit us with a TI. Anton, no, you he, had me up until then. See, Anton's he's number from, 11. Yeah. Anton's from he, uh, Virginia, so he's going to have Missy Ella as number one. First, the <laughs> fat boys break up. Mad skill. Mad wow. skill. Mad skill still spit fire. He, he did a nice little 20, 2020 uh, tribute thing was dope. Mad skills. So I follow Rodney, him the Rodney yeah. are you a little bit more offended by my having Andre 3000 on my <laughs> list or him having no. him at five and Biggie at 11? No. To be honest with you, oh. you're right. He, j- I, I, we have to talk about this, Anton. Like, <laughs> you're saying Biggie is not in the top man. ten. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. This you know, is a long shot you know, you know conversation. For real, right? I, here, I'm man. gonna let you guys yeah. finish, and we gotta go. We gotta revisit that. We have to. Revisit yeah, yeah. That. We gotta come on. Yeah. Let's, go, let's go. Let's go. Number two. Number two. Um, oh, you gotta get. His, you gotta. Oh no, three Damon. Off? Oh, Damon. Uh, Damon gets three off. Did Damon get? Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, I mean, my three is big. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I was too right. Uh, my number two is Olu's son, Nasir Jones. Okay. That's my okay. number two. Yep. 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 That's number two. I'll give you that. I ain't got to say much. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. No, he had yeah. the most classic yeah. album of all time. Nobody's going to argue. Not. Nobody's no, going to argue, argue that. nods. Nobody's going to argue. Nobody's going to argue. Because oh, yeah. his, his music I still, I was watching. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. But I'm not. Oh, he but I'm not. Nah, he yeah, I'm, about to be nah, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Oh. I'm good. Nah, y'all got it. I'm just. I'm just All talking. Right. But I, I would argue it on my show, but not on this one. Bees oh, somebody said Magoo is number Bees one. Magoo is number one. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me let me tell you how this. Oh, let me tell you how this. Magoo is fire. I, this let me tell you about this. In seventh grade, I battled Magoo in the seventh grade hallway bathroom. In a beatbox contest, we went to junior high school. <laughs> oh, <that's not> <laughs> he cooked you? Did he cook uh, you though? That's what nah, we need man. to know. Yeah, who, who, who won the battle? He can be won the battle. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> oh man! Now y'all gotta ask me. So, right. Google be like, man, I cooked him. Uh, <laughs> so my number two is also my one of my personal favorites. So this is more of a personal decision. I choose Lupe Fiasco as my number two. Okay. Oh, um, I don't know if I put him better than big, but they're close to me because I um, I believe he's probably the most creative uh, hip hop artist in the last two decades. And I still mm-hmm. put him above like a kindred. And some of his content is some of the best and most educational that I've had. Like KRS-One, he talks on things on an even deeper level. And he just has some music that I, I feel like is 
is is um too good to just be like wait I didn't I didn't expect people to think on this level to be able to also rap and rhyme on this level too and his ability to do all the different things that Anton was talking about internal rhymes external double triple entendres in the same two couplets is ridiculous I promise you would um yeah we did hear guru I see somebody in the chat mention guru and I'm like yeah guru is great but um yeah that's lupe fiasco is my number two and i think that's more of a personal choice not pe many people are going to agree on that but in terms of lyricists he might be in my top four lyricists of all time and um some of his albums are some of my favorite albums because of his content yeah lupe is great he's he's really good but I, <laughs> nobody in it nobody got him in their top 10. No, right. not no, even in the top even, 67. Right. He's not even oh. in the top 67. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Hey. Yo, I'm going hard, man. Nah, man. I, I'm getting offended. I'm getting offended here. <laughs> hey, we gotta get to the next segment. So number who's number one? And Anton's who's your number one, Anton? Rock him. Yeah, sure. now you're talking. Now I'm now back we, on your now team. We talk, now we're talking MC. Now we're talking about it. For God. <laughs> yeah. he, is, right. he is the alpha and the omega. Period. Mm -hmm. uh, Rock him made everybody change the way they rhymed. Period. Yes. You once you heard the first once you heard Rock him's first record. It changed the game. It put everybody under pressure. We can't just say cat scat rat no more. Rock him just changed <laughs> it. He just changed Rock it. Rakim is the MC that made you stop yeah. and go to the speaker in the first yeah, place. Exactly. Before that, there was none. That dude yeah. was like this. What did he say? He's the first rapper that really made you start Absolutely. pressing your mind. Absolutely. You know I mean? Absolutely. The prototype. He was the prototype, bro. The so, guy. So, Unbelievable. So, Damien, for the sake of time, what's your number one? Jay Z. No, um, I think Jay Z is the one who did what Rakim did. He changed the way everybody rhymed after him. So when he came out and he started mm, rhyming no. the way he was, "I'm a hustler" is a Jay Z line that we didn't heard four billion times since then. Jay Z and changed his style him. like three or four times. Like if you looked but at, he, listen to his early stuff, he was like a mm -hmm. speed rapper. You know what I mean? Everybody and changed, uses that excuse for some reason. Like because every, it's true. you know. Multiple it's people true. use multiple styles when they rap, but w the one that stick, the one that you use more than any other is like your main style. You switch up every time. Like people but switch Damien, up flows. The reason they're cases. changing is because it's not working for them. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jay ain't in my top 20. Jay, I'll, say, oh, I'll oh, say this. Oh, Rakim oh, had a great five-year oh, 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 run. I was waiting for him to say that to y'all. I was like, let me stay quiet. Wow. Wow. That's Virginia bias. I, I, I was right, it is. I was gonna type and say, Anton, say that. Yes, <laughs> so so it now I got a question. Rakim had a great five year run where he was untouchable. And I listened to him in the last decade and I'm I'm I wasn't impressed in any way. I can't song for song. I don't think there's anybody that's close to Jay-Z. Song for song wow. over career. I don't think there's anybody close. I think Jay Z is probably the you you can argue that he's the most influential rapper of all. Correct. Time. Yeah. Certain most successful, one of the most successful. Certainly the most he, successful, yeah. the most yeah. successful period, hands down. You could definitely do yeah. in terms of finances, in terms and, yeah. and, and in terms of carrying the culture forward into the future, you gotta mention them in those in those uh terms. But you know, but yeah, but you know, it's it's valid. You know, I got him, I would put him on my top 10 oh, for that reason. You know yeah. what I mean? But um, he's in the top 10. He's in my in terms, top 10. In terms of me, but in terms of me, this, like is, this is why Jay, this is why Jay doesn't go there for me. He rapped about money holes and clothes for too many years when he wasn't doing that. He, he didn't elevate his his content until later right. in his career. Like 444 is a right. great album. But so I mean, how many years can you rap about money holes and clothes? Right. So yeah. Eminem didn't rap about random wild stuff for the first 90 years of his career. And did you hear Jay Z first album when he was rapping on songs like The Evils and and songs like Luck uh, second album Lucky Me and um, Where I'm From? So there's a bunch of content outside of that stigma of him rapping about one thing about money, hoes, and clothes. Those are singles, just like Big, just like Mace. You you hear them rap about that on the singles to put out to the public, and then you listen to the album and you usually get a different experience. That's my opinion, you know, just saying. I, but Eminem I was rapping about beating up Katy Perry 
and and Je- and Jessica Simpson <laughs> and and who else? Uh, you know, for like a decade. You, know, you, you, you couldn't you couldn't relate to. You know what I mean? But yeah. But, but in his defense, again, if you're talking about somebody who let who carried it forward and let a whole bunch of cats after him eat, you got to mention him. You know what I mean? And yeah. you got to mention Jay and those kind of guys. And I understand yeah. that. You know what I mean? So my last I thing I want to say is. I just, I just wonder what Jay Z would be if Biggie was alive, though. It would have point two more hours. I think I Jay Z admitted Jay Z admitted that Big made him step his game up. Jay Z yeah. admitted that he said, "Yeah, Big made me step my game up." Yeah, yeah. He said, especially no, after who shot you. After yeah. he dropped who shot you, he said, "I had it." Mm-hmm. Yeah, Big opened. There was a little. He dropped up the tape. He said, "Hold, hold that, hold that." He said, "Hold that," and drove yeah. off. So That's we right. couldn't get so, Biggie no more. He definitely wide. He widened yeah. the lane for Jay a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, Yo, guys, they were supposed to combine, right? They were supposed to make the commission, and they were going to start their own label and do their own thing, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, so now, I think they'd have been standing next to each other. Maybe Biggie's the yeah. better rapper, but they probably would have ran, you know, the game together for, for a decade or two, so. Yeah, you know? yeah, because New York rappers suck now, but, you know, we got some guys <laughs> that's coming up. Like, I, I, New York rappers is trash. I'm serious. Like, we got, um, what's my man, man Dave? Come on, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. 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 That is the biggest, wow. that's the biggest diss to New York. Joey Badass yeah. is pretty good. Joey, Joey Badass, Badass yeah. tonight. Yeah, um, there's my, a few and, others. Yeah, and my, what's my called that passed away from COVID? Um, um, what's my brother's name? The big dude, um. Oh, Fred the Godson. Fred the Godson. Yeah, yeah. There's a few. Yeah, yeah. There's a few. So, guys, let me just ask this last thing: Why nobody ever give LL a shot? Y'all do it. Yeah, my list. He's on my list. Wait, wait, wait. 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 Wait, just can you defend Hishi? Do not sleep on that. I can't defend Hishi. You nah. can't. Blow tissues. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt when y'all say it. Yo, but no, but L, 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 L is definitely the best. Yeah, he tried to battle a few times. Like he tried to battle X. He tried to battle J. All right, let me just ask this question. Chuck D said, "Why nobody ever give LL a shot?" Because he's not gonna battle Jay. Yeah, that's what he said. He said he wasn't. And that we all was around when that was going on. You know how it was. He said Curtis Blow was hip hop's first star. Right. And LL yeah. was the first superstar. That's why you gotta mention LL, man. And that's why no, guys, before, before we <laughs> <At least it's laughs> Mr. G Skeevy delicious. <laughs> no, no, shout out to Alyssa. Oh, shout shout out, shout out. Word up. So listen, before we got go, guys, I want you guys uh anything you have coming up and then we're gonna promote, please let us know. Anton, you get the first shot since you're the older gentleman out of the two. Yeah, so I'm working on a new book. Um, it'll be it won't be out for another year or so. But uh, I, when I turn fifty in 2023, I'm doing a, a rap album. So I'm putting out an album for my 50th birthday. Say word, say word. You serious? Serious. Yo, yeah. yo. Yeah. I, 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 I better get I better get sixteen on it, man. <laughs> you, better, you better come ready because I got my. I'm bringing the band back together from back in the day. Oh, you, okay. you better come. You better come. You ready. know you got to get on that. You got to get on. You remember respect from college? Yeah, where's Spec at right now? That's my. Oh, he's in uh, Charleston. Spec still still spent five best freestyles ever known. As um, Spec wow. was um, remember because he sounded like Magoo. Magoo. He could never get a, Yeah, he could never get a deal because he sounded like Magoo because he had the yeah. same voice. But word up, but uh, as as Lord Finesse and Bismarck said when we was in one time in Queens in the club, he told all them people there, "You better not mess with the country dude with the overalls. He'll kill you all." He's the nicest dude out. But anyhow, Damien, what you got promoting, brother? Um, I mean, if y'all want to read my book, uh, learning to quote myself is on my website, DamienTillman.com. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Clubhouse at DamienTillman9. This is my logo right here. Um, there's shirts and things like that. I am currently working on building up the show that I have called The Framework, where we actually take these type of top five barbershop discussions, but we create a framework to have the conversation and a, and a, and a system in which we could have these debates where we not just yelling at each other like ha- like it does happen in the barbershop where the loudest person just seems like they're right. No, you have to make your points and things like that. So it's a good show. Demond has been on it. He came at my soul a few times. We had a fun great. time laughing about it. It's great. Um, but yeah, we're, we've been yeah, on a break. It's, a great, soon it's actually for the it's really, really good. 
we coming back soon. So I'll, I'll definitely shout that information. But if you follow us, uh, um, follow follow me. You'll you'll definitely get all the information you need there. Anton and um, all right, bro. Damien, I want y'all make me one promise though, that this stays on podcast. All right, I don't want anybody going into the studio <laughs> after this. Anton, do not go in the studio. Damien, do not go in the studio. Because you know, in 2023, when that album come out, game in, you know he coming for you. So no. I want. I'll let you keep it. All right, we gonna keep it. All right, that's all I'm saying. All right, the we whole keep it. album <laughs> gonna be an ode to hip hop. I'm just telling the, oh. my ode to hip hop. Hip hop is is my life, and hip hop is who I am. So I just want to mm. celebrate the culture, man, and, and the spirit of it, and do something okay. fun. And I'm probably gonna donate all of the money to charity. Uh, that I make off the album because I am going to sell it. I'm going to sell the album. Yeah, please wow, let me know so I can promote it as well. I was going to say, I'll just yeah, get man. loaded Lux. I'll pay his fee and be like, yo, you got to go get this guy, Anton yeah. Gunn. He was talking about me. <laughs> Battle him real quick on TV. <laughs> Finish that problem real quick. Get him out of yes, here. Sir. Yes, yo, sir. My, my brothers, I love you guys, man. Peace, man. Yo, Thank you for coming on, man. Thank you Let's for this. I got to get a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. I got to get a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Let me know when and I can Anton, get a t-shirt. Anton Damien, text me your address and your size of your shirts and we'll get it to you. Oh, yeah, and I'll buy one, too. I'll buy a second one. So just let me know. I want to support. That's what's up. But we ain't selling them, man. We giving it to, out the love, though, man. So Yo, relax, dude. I appreciate dude. it. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a relax, man. No, I just... <laughs> 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 I got you. I'll sell you. I'll sell you. Mr. <laughs> Jamie just buzzed my ear, too. He just buzzed my ear. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, bro. Peace. We got to get to our next guest, man. I'm sorry. All right, have a good one. All right. Peace, peace. Yeah. Hey, Rob. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> nah, <I'm sorry. laughs> that was, we that was giving them away. We ain't paying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like people's list is subjective. This is good, you know. What I'm saying like they get the, the different uh, perspectives on who they see and what how people make them feel. That's what it comes down yeah. to. What, what you make you feel and stuff like and skills like that. It's your top yeah. ten. It's not anybody else's top ten. It's your top. Very personal thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, with um. With that said, like, you know, parts of hip hop always had to play with videos and stuff like that, right? Video, the video era really propelled hip hop to another level and music and R&B music and all that stuff like that. So, you know, we got a next guest coming on, but I remember, guys, do y'all remember Video Music Box? Oh, back in the day? oh of course. That's do y'all right yeah. remember how to, when that, dun, 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 when that came on, yeah, how you yeah. made you feel you ran home and everything, you press and record. Yeah. For you young people, it was something called the VCR. So you used to press it. Record the video, <laughs> right? Yep. And then you played them. You played them on Sundays when we couldn't get any any uh, what's we call any black uh black movies and videos back in the day. So with that said, Jamie, can you play a little clip from uh, back in the day um, so people can refresh their memory of what what we about to talk about and who we about to bring on? Welcome to New York's number one video show, Video Music Box, from VJ Ralph McDaniels. Of course, putting it down, it's a Friday night street party, and you know how we get down. Bringing you the hottest events around town, and uh, the Dejan Brothers is out at uh, Club Exit tonight, as well as uh, catching up with new recording artists, Emil from the Rockefeller family. Video Music Box, your Uncle Ralph, putting it down, Friday night street party. He smalls, doing his thing in the rap world, that's right, baby. What's up, man? From dance tracks to video music box, I'm back with you, man. What's you up? Know, I mean, I'm just chilling, man. You know, trying to stay out of trouble. Now, the big question for me to you, Mary, is how have you been able to manage that formula to stay so consistent uh, in the game of R&B? Well, I, you know, at first I remember that people, what, what people appreciate me for, they appreciate me for being myself. And that's what carries me a long way. And in being myself, I'm not you know, I'm touchable. You can touch me. You can talk to me. You can see me on the street. You can see me shopping. That's just Mary J. Blige. Now, um, Destiny's Child has been, well, how, how long has it been now? About two years or? Um, the group has been out about two and a half, three years. Yeah. We've been together for 10 years. And just recently we had a change in the group, two new members, Fair and Michelle. Yeah, of course, there was a lot of discussion about that or yeah. radio stations. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we got a chance to uh, listen to part of it on Hot 97. I believe that uh, you were talking with Angie Martinez, it might have been? Yeah, a while back. It was a while back. Yeah. Oh, remember that? You remember that? That's my dude right there. I remember, remember that? that? Yeah. Big kid, Ralph McDaniels. This guy's bringing out, uh, and my man, our guest, Ray Dijon. What's up, Ray? Yo, what, what's what going up, on, Ray? Y'all? How you okay. feeling, Ray? Good. You good? Yeah, we hear you. 
Yeah. I'm good, man. Yeah, god damn. I was I was looking at the the, the video. I'm like, shit, my hair was black. <laughs> I was yeah. like, yo, is that me? Is that young Ray right there? Yo, yo, <laughs> Ray, 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 yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, brother, you you still have hair. My shit is shining on this joint right now. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah. Do it yeah, good. I was I was backstage uh checking out a few people's hairlines. <laughs> Some of you guys made a very conscious decision to cut yeah. it off. Yeah, you make yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Decision, yeah. yeah. You don't bro, you don't want to walk around. You don't want to walk around with the Lou World's hairline. <laughs> <laughs> you never mind. You never mind. <laughs> a hairline like mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, I was checking out your guest, man. And for, first of all, I was falling asleep because I was supposed to go on at seven fifty. Oh man, sorry, man. Wow. I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I, I mean, I'm old now, so yeah. yeah. Mean, I was checking out. Uh, was checking out your guest, uh, 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 Anton, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, did you notice? Because like I'm very observant about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Did you notice in his background he had the grandma bookcase? Did you see that? And he had the first, the original internet. Y'all didn't see that? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Now I don't know if y'all caught it, because I'm very observant. When I say the original internet, he had every single version of the encyclopedias in that bookcase. Wow. He, Britannica. And so, <laughs> that was our internet back in the that day. That was our internet, brother. Word up. <laughs> right, my Damn, that's Google, why yo. this dude is smart as hell. Yeah, word up. <laughs> Google, man. My parents, my parents only go forward to 1979, though. I never had nothing for 79. That was it. That was it for me. Yeah, so Ray, man. Ray, though, know, Ray, we thank you. We have Ray happy that we have you on the show. But you guys don't understand like how much y'all really meant. Just personally to me, like with the hip, with bringing videos, hip hop, we get, all of us got a chance to see people that look like us on the screen or how you guys what you took from just the music on the radio and you propelled us and gave us vision of just having us to having this platform for so many years like i went from probably elementary to, i'm not maybe middle school on the high school to college following video music box so ray i want to thank you for that man and we truly appreciate you yeah. for that you know well I, I i i mean before we go in any further you know one thing about me is i have to acknowledge um other people because we are all made of each other. We're products of each other. You know, we learn from each other. We were influenced by each other. And the gentleman who gave me my start, of course, um, I, I got to pay homage to VJ Ralph McDaniels. He mm -hmm. is the founder of Video Music Box, mm -hmm. uh, which began over 35 years ago. We're working on our 37 year anniversary right now. But I have to, you know, I have to, you know, take my hat off to Ralph and, and give him his props. But before I got on his video show, I was on another show. I don't know if you guys remember this called Dance Tracks USA. This guy named Tony Two. I remember, yeah, show. I remember that. God damn, Ray, brought it back, man. Yeah, that mm. show was on once a, once a week, but Video Music Box was on six days a week. Yeah. I kept saying to myself, I got to get on Ralph McDaniel's show. I got to get on that show. Let me get some experience on Dance Tracks, and I'm going to keep approaching Ralph. So I kept going down to City Hall uh, in Manhattan where his office was at, and I kept bugging him. He shot me down like 10, 15 times. Until one week, uh, it was December in the holiday season, and um, it was very busy for Video Music Box. They were doing a, an enormous amount of tapings, and Ralph was like, all right, man, I'm going to give you a shot. And uh, ever since then, man, it's history. And he put me on – see, Video Music Box, every day was a different theme. Mondays was reggae night. Tuesdays was Tasty Tuesdays with the slow videos. So that's where he put me at. He put me with the slow videos because he was like, yeah – you know, you the fly type dude. You like dressing like Huffy and all of them. I'm gonna put you <laughs> on Tuesday night. Um, then you had uh, Wednesday was neutral. Then you had Nervous Thursdays with Fr uh, Crazy Sam. Crazy and man. Friday and Saturday was any one of us. Tuffy, myself, Skeletor. Uh, and it, it was just a Skeletor. Wow, bro. Wow. Yeah, Skeletor was was Wendy Williams' assistant. Yeah. 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 But it's good he put you on Tuesday because that's when you light skinned motherfuckers were popping back then. So, you know, you well, yeah, yeah, of course. Christopher Williams, you know what I'm saying? Y'all curly haired motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Tuesday was a light skinned brother's nice. You know skin brother's nice. So, so let me ask you a question. So, what, like right now, I can't find videos unless I go on YouTube. What, what do you think changed an industry that made it now so hard? You have to really search because remember MTV used to be they show videos, BET show videos. Now they have all reality shows. 
what you what do you think made it change from going from music to well i i, I tell you the, the exact reason why it's it's the money mm-hmm. first of all uh okay everything started to fade away when social media came on the scene when social media came on the scene and new different types of cameras started coming out at one point you know you had video music box uh rob mcdaniel's doing videos um and you you only had about three or four people that were go-to people to do the videos but the record labels were spending a lot of money on the videos they were spending a lot of money investing a lot of money into the artists social media came came into play uh the uh, the, the money that the record labels were spending they mm-hmm. were starting to cut back because people were starting to develop their own exposure on social media so that social media was 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 the 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 labels were pulling back the bread and not wanting to spend as much money on the videos anymore. Then you had um, all these different types of video shows that were coming out. At one point, we were the only ones in the game. And then Dr. Dre and Ed Lover came in with Yo! MTV Raps. They kind of emulated our show. But once it, they found out a way to do it cheaper, you, could, you, you would only see A-list artists with the videos. Everybody else was kind of left out in the cold they weren't investing they weren't giving you no upfront money anymore you were not getting uh, all of that you had to prove yourself at, at at one point in the industry prove yourself and then we'll assist you and support you in promoting your record if it's if, if you're not making a buzz on your own like wu-tang did when they started selling albums out of the trunk and getting that exposure on your own people are not willing to, they weren't willing to sign you and they weren't willing to spend a lot of money on the videos in the beginning the labels had a lot of bread. They were spending enormous amounts of money on the mm-hmm. video. They start cutting back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Ray, let me ask you this question. This is something that has bothered me for a while. Years ago, I guess in the early 90s, you could have 20 different artists on the radio. And, and as of late, it just seems like you have three rappers or, or four rappers. It, it, it's just not the same. Man, I'm saying these people still have talent. Where did they go? Why is it that it, it is so rare to have diversity on? And, you know, I look at female rappers. There's, there's the same two now. It used to be eight. It used to be, you know, even with the guys. So why is it, you know, so rare to see a lot of people in the field now? You mean uh, that the playlist is a lot shorter, you're saying? It, yeah, it seems like a lot, a lot I-97 belongs to Drake and a few other people. That- My point exactly. So... Um, I mean, in, in my opinion, again, revenue streams are very limited now. There's very little ways to get money from a sponsor. So when they do the the, the, uh, the analytics on music, they, a lot of the radio stations, they have to follow billboards. Billboards is probably the number one, you know, reputable uh, uh, analysis for, for music. So... If the radio station, I mean, they may take it on satellite on Sirius XM. It's a little different because it's it's a it's a radio station where you have to subscribe and you got to pay for it. Mm-hmm. But regular uh, mainstream radio, terrestrial radio, no one subscribes. So if this it's not an album, a, a, a artist that's really making noise, they're not going to put them in the playlist because it's going to take away from listenership and it's going to take away from the money that radio stations are making. Mm. Bottom line, they run those computers. Like, let me tell you something. If a, if a radio jock, if it's outside of Flex, and the only reason why Flex could do it is because Flex has a contract that's airtight. But all these other radio personalities, with the exception of a few, if they put on a, ra- a song that's not in the playlist, you know, the fines that they get and the possibility or the potential of they, them getting fired, I'm telling you, it's crazy. Wow. So mm. they, they all, I used to think that a, 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 a radio jock can just put whatever he wants on. It's not even like that. If it's not on a playlist in the computer, I know because I was on Radio 103.9. Yep. And, and during my show, they gave me a, a flexibility of maybe seven minutes because I had a new artist spotlight where I can put that in. But then they, ha- they also had to bring sponsors um, with the new artist spotlight, but other than that, I had to follow each song that came up on the computer. Wow. So 
to right now it's it's, it's more about revenue uh, than anything else if mm -hmm. you if you develop your own situation on social network and you you demand a certain amount of followers then you can start asking for money so now it's like show it to me i'll give it to you if you don't have it i'm not giving you nothing yeah, mm -hmm. corporate, corporate America destroyed it, man. I mean, we, we have a yep. request line back in the day. You could shout out, play a little yeah, song yeah. to your girl back in the day. You can't do none of that shit anymore. That's, that's, it took away from oh, the man. fans. You guys, loyal fans when you did stuff like that. People will do that stuff, but they took yeah. it away from that, man. By the way. Yo, Ray, let me um, ask you a question. Go ahead. But before you get to that, I want to say this, because I, I don't want to uh, forget this thought. So Anton uh, was saying that he was, uh, he battled, who was it that he battled? Magoo, uh, uh, Magoo, Magoo. 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 Rest in peace to ecstasy from Houdini. So mm -hmm. now, you, you guys know that the theme song of Video Music Box is a Houdini song. Yeah, correct. Yeah. 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 All right. So, and, 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 and Didi, you're not going to believe this. So back in the days before Houdini came out, I was also a rapper. I lived around the corner from, he lived in White Car Projects, which was right next to Gowanus. Yeah. And I was in Red Hook. And so we used to do, you know, battles in the park. When we used to bring the speakers out there. I used to battle against ecstasy. Wow. Wow. He has wow. a twin brother that looks exactly like he him. He like him, yeah, he does. We used to call him Heckle and Jekyll, both of them. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so yeah, so so before I did a career in uh Elmira Correctional Facility, before I went on vacation <laughs> there, I was a rapper. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yo, Ray, let me ask you a question. You know, I, I always remember you from doing tons of interviews, right? What was your first interview? I saw you interviewed Beyonce, but besides Beyonce, what was your first interview early in your career that you said, whoa, I got to interview him or her that made you really, you know, that put you out of place? Wow. You was, you was kind of, you was kind of, you knocked you off your feet, in other words. Stevie Wonder. Wow. Yeah, that was yeah, me. Yo, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I was nervous as that's shit. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. Yo, they gave me all these notes. Ralph gave me, he said, yo, when you get there, uh, go to the producer. He's going to give you all the, the, the bullet points. Because, you know, a lot of times when we do a press day uh, and Video Music Box was invited, they would all, they would give us all these bullet points in the bio and all this stuff about people. But Stevie Wonder, and it, I was so nervous that he saw me being nervous. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga was like, I see you shaking. I'm happy you could have a glimpse. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was, no, a, lot people, was, a lot of people say Stevie can see. Yo, oh, yo, I, I, he felt he felt he felt my vibe that I was nervous. He said, hey man, it's all it's all good, man. You know, mm. it's, all, it's all good. You know, ask your questions. Um yeah. him and well Beyonce was a she was a rising star at the time. At the time, yeah. And she, I and I believe like there was rumors. Even that's when uh, that that when I interviewed her, she was doing the hook on a meal song when Rockefeller signed the first female, a meal. Okay, yeah, I remember meal label. And and Jay Z decided that he wanted to make his directorial debut, so he was directing the Emile video, and Beyonce happened to be there. To sing the hook on the song. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why she was there. Um, and I think that is around the time when JC Jay Z started smashing. Whoa. Damn. Damn. Can't blame him for that, right? <laughs> Can't blame him for that. that. Wow. And yeah. so I think it was and that was a long time ago. Yeah, that's long. Wow. Yeah. 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 Now are you amazed that some of them how the careers went? I mean, the people that you just showed. I mean, forget it. I mean, they've had, they put together over 20 years now. Yeah, I, um, you know what's so cool about it? Especially, like, one person that I, I really respect a lot, even though he's very egotistical, and um, me, me be, being on Video Music Box, you get to be backstage, you get to be up close and personal, you get to hang out, you get to, you go to uh, cities, you go to the after parties, and you mingle. So I got to mingle on a personal level with a lot of people, and there's, a, like, like for instance, Kanye West. Kanye West, what we've seen in the media eventually about his ego and he's narcissistic like Donald Trump, I saw that a very long time ago. I saw that before he had his first single out. When Jay-Z wow. put his albums out and Kanye had a couple, produced a couple of songs, one day I went to do, uh, it was an album release party for Jay-Z 
and I'm I'm there. I'm interviewing people. I'm giving an interview, Jay Z, and uh, one of the uh, producers said, "Hey, Ray, can you do me a favor and interview this guy right here, Kanye? He did a song on the album. Uh, I want you to interview him." So I went over to him with the camera, and I was like, "Yeah, you know." So he told me to do an interview. To can we go do it now? He's like, "Yo, yo, you gotta give me a minute. You gotta give me some time." I looked at him. I was like, "Nigga." <laughs> yeah, like who the fuck are you? That was one time. The second time, I'm at Hot 97 Summer Jam. We backstage. Kanye just came out with a song, so the song was hot. They decided to let him come out and do the single. He backstage. My brother was doing these airbrush shirts. My brother was the first one to do Biggie, Tupac. It was hot at the time. It was being sold in Dr. J's. He he blew up after. I put this, the, uh, the shirts on a lot of artists because I had that access. So we did one with Kanye's face on. So I gave Kanye his shirt. I'm like, yeah, Kanye, you know, can throw this on. We're going to do an interview with you. So he's like, all right, cool. He said, yo, man, I don't usually do this, but he's like, all right, cool. So he's getting ready to put the shirt on. The camera dude puts the camera up. Kanye loses his mind. Yo, yo, nigga, cut that shit off, son. Yo, word up, man. I can't be seen like that. Yo, what, man? Yo, put that shit down. I'm like, looking at this nigga. He's like, yo, let me talk <laughs> shit in first. <laughs> yo, yo, that's that, was, that was around the time when the clothes was getting tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it wasn't, it was, they were, we were just moving away from the, the baggy shit. The big yeah. stuff, yeah. And, and Kanye was starting to change that, you know, because he's a fashion <laughs> dude. But it, it was even at that time, man. And I seen this guy's personality. I'm like, yo, this dude right here is an asshole, bro. Wow, wow. And sure enough, yeah, sure enough, eventually, you know, the public starts to see it. But you, I get to see all of this backstage. Right? Yeah. So, Puffy, when Puffy sees me now in public, because I remember he was, a, he was a dancer. I did something on 125th Street in front of the state office building. We was doing, I was, I was hosting something out there. Puffy wasn't even. There he goes. Yeah. And he was a <laughs> video dancer. That's how far back I know Puff. Wow. So I see the evolution of his career. And when I see him now, he'll see me across the room. Yo, Ray, come here. And he, you know, I go up to him and I talk to him like, like a regular person, man. It's just, it's just amazing that, you know, um, all the experiences that I've had, I would never change it, first of all. Every rapper that has died, I've interviewed, uh, from Aaliyah to Big Punt to uh, Freaky Ty. Uh, Tupac, I interviewed Biggie, um, and every and all of them. I, I mean, I've got archives of shit that sometimes I don't even believe that I was, you know, with these guys when the whole shit started. Yeah, yeah. Hey, let so, me ask you a question. What was the biggest interview you ever had in terms of like uh, maybe relevance? You know, maybe socially relevant or relevant in your in your life or career at the time. What, what would you say is the biggest one that you had? The biggest yeah. interview um, that I felt was a big interview was with Eminem. Mm. Okay. Because he was just fired at the I mean I, I know they were talking oh by the way my top two uh rappers of all time is Vanilla Ice and MC Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Yo my, my favorite my, my favorite rap group is my favorite rap group is three five seven. Yeah yeah Eminem was a, a, a superstar uh, status at the time when I interviewed him. So it was a big interview for me. And I, I used to be impressed sometimes when Ralph goes, you do the interview, right? You do it. I'm like, word? And he'll be there. Ralph will be there. And he'll go your way. I, I, I never thought that he would say, you do it. Even with Biggie. I think that when I did the, uh, I interviewed Biggie three times. But the one that you saw was at Ralph McDaniel's birthday party. It was at an event in the city with Ralph Party, and Biggie came and, and Jay Z freestyled that night. Biggie performed. Puffy was there. You know, it was crazy. And y'all remember the Ark in Brooklyn? Yeah. Yes, yes. Cool. So the Ark is is the first time when I seen like Busta and and KRS One. And by the way, KRS One is in my top ten. I don't know if you if you guys ever had a chance to see him live, like really, really perform. Yeah, concert, yeah. But yeah, that yeah. nigga is amazing, bro. Amazing. amazing. Yeah. It's no, nobody can follow behind him. Amazing. Wow. He's amazing. Him and DMX, the only two rappers I could think of right now, I think nobody want to follow behind. 
DMX is a different kind of energy on, 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 when he comes on stage. And Karis one. Yeah. And one thing yeah. I want people to know, Scott LaRock lived down the block for me in Queens. And Brad, my man Brad, can testify that. He used to be at Skiles. Me and his brother Chris hung out all the time. Mm. So that so Scott, when he went at Queens, I had to go at Scott out there. I was like, bro, you're down the block. We almost, <laughs> had, we almost had a little a little battle on the block there, man. But so Ray, let me ask you a question, man. Um, all of it, which videos you ever saw? I said we can't play this goddamn video on the show. This shit is whack. You ever said that? To <laughs> ah, see that. Um, I really wasn't involved in that. Uh, that was all Ralph. Um, but Ralph would wouldn't do play anything that was. Uh, it was it was too much. He called it you know TNA. Too much titties and ass. Okay. I wouldn't put it on the show. Right. Uh, Anything with nigga, like all that kind of stuff, I would, wouldn't put it on the show. Um, but one thing that I've realized, though, uh, Didi, o- over time is that there's some artists that I felt were whack, but that was my own <laughs> subjective opinion. And, you know, if somebody played a few songs for me, the one that we normally think is not going to be the hit is the one that normally becomes the hit. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, yeah, I didn't think you, you know, I didn't think this was gonna be all that, but this shit right here is number one, you know, on the billboard. Just crazy how like so I never I I, I tried my best to be neutral. Um I, I didn't want to treat any artist different than, than any other because I mean let's face it, at the time when I was with Video Music Box, the whole hip hop industry was growing up. We were we were in the infantile stages you know ralph was the first one to give a visual to somebody's music we mm-hmm. would hear people and like yo what does this nigga look like like who is this dude like people wanted to see it um and so it was an amazing uh part of the evolution of hip-hop where ralph was able to take it and now put a face to it where people can see those people uh performing their music and then along with the fashion and the graffiti and the dancing and the whole hip hop culture because it's made up of a whole bunch of different elements. It's not just the music, it's the culture mm-hmm. behind it. And it all worked together. Uh, you, you guys may not even notice either. So Ralph had a, a, a fashion show we did every year called Fat Fashion. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Nietzsche, FUBU, FUBU got mm-hmm. founded at our fashion show. There was some Korean finances there and uh, they, that's where FUBU got their start. Damon John will always tell you that, and it's in his bio, that the first time anybody recognized for us, by us, was at one of our fashion shows called Fat Fashion. Uh, so that's why, like, you know, the whole the whole culture to me is, is, is just an amazing, amazing thing that we've all been through. I'm a little older than you guys, but um, I got to see it from the beginning, man. I'm just happy that, that Ralph gave me that opportunity. So... You know, now when I, I look back and I reflect, I'm like, shit, man. I remember there was no videos. I remember. Oh, yeah. Ray, let me ask you this, this last one from me. Um, Because of that, in the 90s, I remember everybody was trying to become a rapper. I mean, everywhere you went, everybody's trying to buy studio time. How was it for you to go somewhere in public? I'm sure people were trying to break their neck to either give you tapes or something. I, I mean, I can only imagine the stories it could have been. How How was that? It was crazy. First of all, and I worked for Ralph, but if you were on TV and you worked for Ralph McDaniels, the hottest video show in the tri-state area, and by the way, regional video show, Ralph got a Billboard's Award 22 years in a row for the number one regional video show. Mm. And a lot of people don't know that. Billboard's had awards for local stuff as well. And although we were only in a tri-state area, we were trendsetters and a, a difference maker in the music industry. It's like, okay, if you want your song played, you got to go to Flex, but if you want your video played, you got to get it on Video Music Box. Um, so when they would see me in the street, and, and believe it or not, uh, Kelvin, even today, even up until today, people give me music. To, wow. to try to get it even up until today. Now, back then, every time I left my house, somebody was giving me a, a cassette tape or a CD. Okay. 
And sometimes, um, you know, uh, 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 Crazy Sam would go, yo, niggas, give me some shit. I'm a Frisbee that shit. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, and I used to get a bunch of them. Uh. Give them the rap because if if some music is going to be played or a video is going to be played, it's got to go through Ralph anyway. You know, I, I respect the, the 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 chain of command. It's like I, I never, and I think that's why me and Ralph are still friends until today, is because I, I respect Ralph. I never stepped on his toes. Uh, I thought it was a platform for me to eventually take my popularity. I'm not even going to say celebrity. I'm going to say popularity and put it to good use and develop my own lane and create my own lane, which you guys know, uh, I am you know, 100% into the comedy game right now. Uh, music is in my heart. I still love music. I get hired to host a lot of old school hip hop concerts, whether it's at the Barclays or the Garden or, or, or wherever. I, I still love doing that. I enjoy it. But comedy, I decided to do comedy because I didn't want to step on Ralph's toe. I didn't want to go start my own video show. I didn't want to go to a label and ask for sponsor money because I would be getting it in the name of Video Music Box. That's where I got my name from. So if I go there, they're going to give it to me on that string. So then when if Ralph goes and follows behind me to Sony and Sony goes, oh, we just gave Ray 10000 That's when Ralph would have been like, yo, nigga, what you doing? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I respected the game. I respected, I respected the principles in the game. And I and I use it to my advantage. So now, not only do I still call Ralph for things, but he calls he calls me also. So we have a nice fair exchange uh, in what we do in the industry. So so Ray, man, yeah, you know, I know you for a long, super long time. Yeah, I still look in good shape. I got I got I got a picture I got to show in a little video, man. So yeah, producer Jamie, show show something about little Ray. Let's see how this motherfucker keep doing it. Go ahead, go ahead, Jamie. All right, yo, y'all know what it is. It's workout season. Now it's free because the parks are available. No more paying for the gym. You got to get your workout on. I'm getting ready to reach my 57th birthday. This is how I do it in the park. Yeah, man, you know what it is. Yo, Ray. Ray, you look look like you just came home from unpaid parking tickets. You work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, Rodney, man, let me tell you, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's a good second <laughs> the fact that um, yeah, I do have a history, man. I I uh, and again, man, yo, you don't understand how how humbled I am that Ralph gave me a shot because mm-hmm. everything works hand in hand. Listen, guys. I've been arrested like 32 times. I did three bids. Um, my last bid was three years. I mean, I started off as a teenager, fucking up, bro, selling drugs and doing everything that I did, man. So got my GED while I was incarcerated, um, started college, came out in the street, a couple of years in the street. Ralph gave me a shot, bro. So like, I was very young, man, when I started with Ralph. I've known Ralph like 30 years now. You know what I mean? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the reason why I still do pull-ups is because jail is still in me, man. It's, yeah. I, I I do a jail workout. I don't know anything different than that. And that, um, that's the best workout, though, Ray. Yeah, that's oh, the yeah. best workout. Those calisthenics. That's that's the thing that so, gets your body right. Ray Ray looked like one of them dudes that's in one of them Viagra commercials. That was about to get in the tub with his lady. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? Got his gray hair shining. Yeah, that. Yeah. He still he's one of the dudes, he's the dudes with the good hair. Yeah, don't yeah. be mad at that. You, you, don't be mad at none of that. You better, you better bring that shit in your life. No, <laughs> no, you know that. Right chick, you get ready to smash. You gotta ask her three questions. Listen, you want me to fuck the shit out of you? You want to have regular sex, or do you want me to jail rape your ass? <laughs> you want me to jail rape you? I need a Red Bull, a Jamaican drink, and a Viagra. Wow. I will destroy you. <laughs> you want regular dick? Huh? What? I'm going to just yeah. drink the orange juice. <laughs> no, no, no. Yo, Ray, funniest story behind the scenes with a celebrity. Funniest story you can remember. Funniest story. Let me see. Oh, it's funny, but it's sensitive, but it's funny. Okay. So every year, uh, Fat Joe and the Terror Squad, would always get a float 
for the Puerto Rican Day Parade. I've seen it. Video I've Music seen Box it. always covered it. Mm -hmm. I was always on the float with Big Pun, Fat Joe, Tony Sunshine, the whole mm -hmm. squad. Big Pun, this shit was hilarious, bro. Could not get on the float because he was too big. The nigga at the time had to be 500, damn near 600 pounds. Yo, Big Pun was like huge. I don't know if you've ever yeah. met him in person. Yeah, yeah. I did. I nigga. saw him in person. Pun used to have a bed in his living room. Yo, you know how they, you know how we got him on a on the float? We no. had to go get a forklift. Get out of here. God damn. Put this nigga on the float. Yo, son. <laughs> I'm laughing, kid. I was like, nah, oh, this oh. is impossible. Fat Joe was like, fuck that, fuck that. We got, yo, yo. Uh, I forgot the managers do. We went around the corner because they couldn't pick the nigga up to put him up there. Wow. They had some plywood and some two by fours and put it on a forklift to get pun on the float. Damn. Yeah. I, I, I actually. A little big... sensitive, but the shit was funny to me. Yo, this shit's yeah, funny. Yeah. That's just yeah, funny. That's funny. funny. Now, I'm like... now I'm about to do your jail workouts because I don't want to be the next big pun. I'm in there. I'm in Yo. The... I'm Yo. The... <laughs> I, I got a big I got a big pun story. And it actually was on one of the Puerto Rican Day parades. Port I'm standing outside on the corner, and Big Pun pulls up to me and asks me directions. How could he get out? Because he was in a Benz. I've never seen anything like this. He was so big, I couldn't see the driver because I was on one <laughs> side of the car. I couldn't see the dri who was driving yeah. the car. He was that big. He was blocking the driver. Yeah, he's big. He, 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 he took up the whole whole side of the passenger seat of the car. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, but he was a nice dude. I mean, he was. No, he he's was been, mad cool. Very, yeah, very nice dude, man. Yeah, yeah. Right, but he used to be breathing and shit like. Yeah, he was breathing very heavy. Yeah. Yes, they had yeah. to. They had to. They had to bring uh some like buckets for the nigga to pee in and shit because he couldn't get Ooh. on and off the float. Um, but uh, I mean, it, it's yo, bro. It's like it's like those times, man. Those little sensitive times, man. I had these like real crazy, intimate moments. Um, remember so. Being on video music box, I got invited to a lot of shit. So I'll tell you another story. So Mike Tyson, who I used to work for, this is when Mike was in his prime. Mike wanted to start a, 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 a music label. So I was part of the music label with Mike Tyson. We had this uh, crazy office on Willoughby, downtown Brooklyn. Anyway, he's a cancer. I'm a cancer. We celebrate our birthdays together. This is when he had the mansion, the one that 50 bought from him. Uh, Connecticut. I'm in Connecticut. Yeah. One in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So he invited me. He's like, away, come, you know, I'm going to give you a room. You can stay overnight. Well, uh, you know, every celebrity you could imagine, every major artist was there. We partying in Mike Tyson's crib. The shit was dope. So I'm not starstruck or nothing because I'm around all these dudes all the time anyway. So, but for anybody that's coming as your guest, it's, it's crazy for them. they like, yo, this shit is crazy. So Tretch was there. Uh, Brought some niggas from Newark. I get my own room. It's every room in the house is the duplex. So I I fell asleep. Everybody went to sleep, got up in the morning. Niggas got up, figured, and, and found out that they got robbed. Mm. I had a Rolex, a ring, bracelet. All my shit was gone. Mike Tyson's sister Jackie, her Rolex. Some niggas went through the house while everybody was sleeping and robbed people. Wow. Wow. So Mike Tyson gets up in the morning, he take break, calls me in the room, he's like, yo, Ray. So I want you to be honest with me. Tell me how much your shit costs, but don't lie to me. Ray. Just tell me what it costs. I'm gonna pay for all your shit right now. Just give me a price. I'm paying for everything. Anybody who got robbed, he took money out of a safe. And he was paying everybody for their shit. No, I don't give a fuck how much it costs. The next day, but he goes, yo, I'm going to find out who did this shit, Ray. The next day, Tretch from Naughty by Nation calls, yo, Ray, remember the Motel Cafe, guys? Hell yeah. Yeah, Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, yo, Ray, meet me at the Motel Cafe. <laughs> you know how wild Tretch is. Yeah. Tretch says, meet me at the Motel Cafe, my nigga. I got all your shit back. Oh, wow. so what right. Mike Tyson did was Mike called every all the main niggas that he invited who brought people with him, 
He said, yo, I want I want you to flush out your crews, your little crews, your little crony niggas that run with you, flush some niggas out, find out who robbed my shit. And Tretch found out. They beat this nigga to a pulp and got all this shit back. Wow. Because when Mike Tyson speaks, people <laughs> listen. Right. <laughs> that's the good one. That's the good one. That yeah, was good. That's the great one. Yeah, it happens, man. One. Like, yeah, man. Yo, Ray, that was great. Mm. So, Ray, what, what what else you got going on? Like you said, you have the comedy. You can tell people about the comedy that you do at Linden, Linden Diner, and all the other stuff. And tell about the trips that you're throwing uh, coming up this summer. Okay, so um, my brand, uh, I'm always going to be Video Music Box, but my brand that I created is called Laughaholics. Uh, the reason why I call it Laughaholics is because when I came home from doing time, I developed a cocaine problem. I was a base at. I was going down to Fat Cat on 150, and I was copping those $20 bags from them girls that you couldn't give singles to. I don't know if y'all remember that shit. Yeah, brother, you know Fat Cat's from around the way, so I know. Supreme Team and Fat Cat and all of that. I became a drug addict. And this was around the time... Uh, you know, a few years after I was out, I put myself in a drug program, uh, came out of the drug program. So because I was an addict before, because I was, that's why I like now my brand is called Laughaholics because you, you, you know, you can't, you, you can't lose no money. It's not going to mess you up physically. It's not going to mess up your relationship. You can become addicted to laughter. You can laugh all the fuck you want and you're not going to lose nothing. You use drugs, you know, you lose every fucking thing. That's why I call it Laughaholics. All right, move, moving forward from that. Um, so I created this brand. And again, thanks to Ralph, I got to meet a lot of people. So any A-list comedian that's out there right now, I have relationships with, whether it's Tracy Morgan, D.L. Hughley, uh, Mike Epps, Kevin Hart, they all started with me. So using my popularity, and I was still on Video Music Box, I used to do my own comedy show. I would find a restaurant, a bar, a place, and I would do my own show. And um, I, I started creating that. And all of these guys, Michael Blackson, they all started with me from when I was doing video music box and doing my parties and my events. So when I broke off from Ralph, I decided to create a comedy empire. And from that, it grew over the years. Um, and I, I book comedians now. I do, I do bigger shows, maybe four times a year. And then locally, uh, I have a venue that I operate out of. Uh, out of a restaurant. I've been there 15 years consistently. I do Wednesday and Thursday. It's called Laughaholics Comedy Club. Uh, and so now during this pandemic, we, we weren't able to do anything indoors. So I created the, uh, the, I was the first person to do the drive-in comedy series. Uh, Dave Chappelle, when he just did his special, the one he did outside, he mentioned me in that. He's like, yeah, my, uh, my man in Brooklyn was the first one to do the drive-in. And now everybody's doing the drive-in comedy around the country. So I had to get innovative. And I created that, which I'm getting ready to start the old school hip hop series. I'm gonna do a driving com uh, a driving old school hip hop show with Big Daddy Kane in two weeks. Yo, oh, Ray, Ray, that's coming. my favorite artist, Ray. We're there. Yeah. So I'm there. I just want to do driving. I convinced Make Slick Rick to do it, and I convinced Kane to do it. So wow, wow, Ray, so I want the, guys, I want my parking spot right there. Yeah. So can yeah. you imagine that a driving show with Kane? Yeah, right. yeah. I, I'm already yeah. there. I'm already there. I'm already there. Yeah. So um, I, I, I've been able to make a living, you know, put my kids through college. Um, uh, you know, I, I live comfortably um, just just through this brand of doing comedy. Uh, I'm very, very particular about how the delivery of it and the professionalism and how the customers treated from A to Z. Uh, I'm really hands on. And over time, since I always had a, 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 a humorous personality, I learned how to do stand up myself. I learned the technical aspects of stand up. So I put in all this, these ad libs that I do here and there. I've been able to structure it into a set. So sometimes I tour with the Queen of Comedy some more. I've been out with DL Hughley. I've been out with Bill Bellamy. I feature for them. Uh, and it's something that I love. I love being on stage. I love moving crowds. I love uh, uh, being able to, like when you're in front of an audience of 5,000 people, guys, it's like a hell of a feeling. It's drugs to me. It's like that's a new drug. Yeah. Um, when you're able to control and move an audience, and you watch everybody from the from the bottom of the crowd all the way to the top, how they, it's like a wave of laughter, man. It's just a hell of a feeling uh, that I I enjoy a lot, man. But I it, it was good that I learned the business part first. 
So because I know the business part, um, I've been I've been really able to to maintain you know a good life, man. And again, I thank Ralph because he gave me a shot, man, to put my face and my likeness out there and to be able to meet all these people so I can bring it together. My resources are deep, you know. Yeah. Uh, so last but not least, and this is the first people that I'm telling this. Next week I'm signing my lease. I'm opening a soundstage comedy club, which is going to be on Washington Avenue and Park Avenue in Brooklyn, one block from the Navy Yard. Beautiful. Oh, dope, dope. dope. Uh, it's going to seat 250 people. Um, my grand opening is going to be sometime in July. I'm in the building phase right now. It's going to be a state-of-the-art $200,000 sound system, a soundstage comedy club. Those are the two loves of my life, and I'm bringing it together. And it's going to be called 275 Park, the home of Laughaholics Comedy Club. Uh, and so that's coming. I'm really excited about that. The pandemic has allowed me to get Trump to give me some fucking money that I'm taking, <laughs> and I'm going to make some good use out of it. I'm not yeah. it's none of that. Because I had design entertainment now as an LLC for like 20 years, they gave me that bread that I don't have to pay back. But I didn't spend it. Good. All of that money is going right into there. Yeah, so I'm glad you. Wow. That's better not rewind no Gucci underwear. Tell us about exactly. your trip real quick. Nah, bro. <laughs> Tell us about the yeah, trip. Man. Before you back. Tell about the uh, the trips before we wrap up. Oh, oh, oh so uh, well, I do this every year. I work with this group called Lady Diamonds, and we do. Um, uh, like a vacation trips. We're going to Costa Rica and the Queen of Com I just booked the Queen of Comedy some more. She's the headliner of the weekend. And uh, it's great, man. It's like, you know, we it, a bunch of us go out. We got 400 people already. We're looking to do about 800 to 1,000 people. We just go to an island, go to Costa Rica to an all-inclusive uh, uh, venue. And we have entertainment every day, theme parties, excursions, comedy show, uh, it, everything. It's super DJs, a lot of di different DJs uh, uh, at the event. But it's nice. You know, I don't know if you guys remember, I, I was the main host uh, at the Cancun All-Star for yesterday. Chris Latimer used to do that back in the days. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, baby Chris. Uh, yeah, Chris Latimer used to do that in Cancun. I was the main host. And then Ed Lover came on. It was me and him that hosted that for like 10 years in a row until DJ Self and them started coming down there doing free parties. And then they took it over. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of history, man. Like yeah, man, yeah, man. That that well, we've Ray, done. Ray, Ray, what's the dates of the trip before we go? What's the dates you got? Uh, July twenty second through July twenty sixth. And how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, give out your Instagram and everything that you. Yeah, my yeah, Instagram is uh, at Ray Dijon, R A Y D E J O N. I'm a businessman as well, so my website is DijonEntertainment.com, and uh, uh, don't forget to check out my TV show. On Amazon Prime, it's called Laughaholics Live. I have about 32 episodes up there. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can check out my, my show up there. Uh, uh, it's called Laughaholics Live on Amazon Prime. So check that out when you get an opportunity. Yo, Ray, I want to thank you, man, from the back of everybody. Let's chop it up, brother. Thanks. You know how much I love you, man. Me and you have been friends for decades. You my dude. You know, every time I see you, you always show me love. Like Ray, one thing I say with Ray, Ray, I don't care. Ray met a thousand and one celebrity people. As soon as I walked through the door, he always showed me love, no matter where it was. Yep. So I yes, always sir. appreciate you for that, man. You always I've never forgot where you came from. You might do for life, bro. So what I'm gonna do for you guys, uh, all for you, is um, you know, I, I don't know if you saw DJ Self do this, but they have the new man weave, the man weave. <laughs> <laughs> This bastard got the last laugh. Yeah, we try to get the last laugh. <laughs> that motherfucker, man. I'm gonna get y'all niggas some permanent waves. <laughs> yo, yo they, they got the, hey, they got the waves of the beards now too, man. That's <laughs> no, man. That's, <laughs> why, that's why I'm gonna take my PPP. I'm gonna give me some hair. I'm <laughs> buying me some hair back, goddamn it. Yo, I, <laughs> thank I, you, fellas. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, Ray. Appreciate Ray, I, can't let, I can't let that slide. This is our show. So the oh, album right. show. <laughs> oh, we're, 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 I'll be sure that's right. No, no, that's, that's good. good. That's good. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh, uh, Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. 
Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but you know you look just like that nigga Bert from Sesame Street, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Yo, it's been a pleasure, man. It's been a it's pleasure. The, it's the eyebrows. It's the eyebrows for me, my nigga. <laughs> Yo, Ray, man. Thank you, man. Love you, man. Tell right, Jane. Right, tell Jane to say what's Take up, care, man. Right, man. Right, yo, man. Aditi, yo, Aditi, call me about Kane. Call me about Kane. I'm gonna yeah. call you. I'll call, call you. I'll call you tomorrow. I'll call you tomorrow. I'll call you tomorrow. All right, cool. All right, all right, man. All right, later, man. Peace, 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 peace. Yo, like, this was a great show. I'm sorry, yeah. people. We have Fredro Star from Onyx lined up, but Freddie, when we when he's in the studio, he was with his kids, and some stuff went down. With you know, how he got a little young one. So Fredro said, "D, I'll be back. You know, just let me know whenever date you want to come back on." But he's with his family, so some things went on. And we did yeah. see him when he was rehearsing. He was he was with his children. So sorry about that. Yeah, but yeah, this is yeah. a great show, man. This is a great show. Ray's great got show. a lot of history. Live Ray, Ray, man. Ray, Ray is a class act. Me and you went to his drive-in show. We mm -hmm. had a great time. We took our ladies with us. It's mm -hmm. a, it's probably the most safest environment that probably since COVID's been out. Like because you get to stay in your car and you get in a show right in your car. You know what I mean? Yeah, you you, eat food, you go inside. You bring the food to your car. You in the, yeah. in your car. It's a very nice environment. It's right at, at, at Lindenwood Diner. If anybody yeah, want to get in contact with Ray about the show, just reach out to me and I'll put you in contact with Ray. Ray, Ray, and Ray, and that's Rodney. Rodney didn't know I knew Ray, and Ray picks up the phone to text back himself directly to you. That's right. And the thing is, like, I dealt with Ray on the phone, didn't even know me, didn't even know me and you knew each other. And like I said, the dude was a class act. Yeah. Class act. Yeah, straight professional. And, uh, straight professional. and also, at the show, we had Anton Gunn. You know, Anton was bringing Damien. That was dope. You know, and, yeah. the, and I like, like, the brothers also talk about the, you on the side with the mentor, and they both mentor people and stuff like that. But the hip hop segment was very dope, selective, of subjective. Uh, list different list, but good list, you know. You gotta say, so. yeah, yeah. And it's a very personal list, man. You know, lists yeah. are a very personal thing, man. That's what yeah. causes all the nice little interesting yeah. interactions and arguments in the barbershop. Okay. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, if you please, we want to have a vice, uh, vice, uh, segment part of the show right. next week. We like, we're gonna hear from uh, four wise men here, and we yeah. want all the ladies and gentlemen for any time, any advice, any kind of questions, like bring them up to us, bring them to our producer, Jamie, bring them to Kelvin, uh, Rodney, and Derek, and myself. I mean, we want to start this new segment off next week. And um, anything else the guys want to say? And we're also going to have contests and giveaways next week. Yes, that's right. We got to go one. out. We got to go out with a happy birthday to my man. So happy birthday. That's right. Derek. Happy birthday, oh, Derek. Derek, yeah. 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 Derek, I wish Derek is 26 today. 26. Yeah. 26 years <laughs> oh, old today. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. And, Derek, and Derek, and the, and, the, and, the, and the guy that comes out the door all the time, he said he got strippers for you tonight. For your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, Lisa said happy birthday, man. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. you for always you know, watching. the best. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, and we're gonna be using wow. Lisa's image on our shows too. So she gonna okay. a lot of people gonna see Lisa a lot. She might get started notice down walking down the street whenever we go back outside. People gonna say, Hey, I know her. So yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> and oh, my yo. man, my man Brad, aka Jelly. <laughs> I, I just want to say this too. My wife is my witness. I even called D. I got recognized on the street for this show. Yep, I'm, oh, a, I'm a celebrity. <laughs> Yo, brothers, I love you guys, man. Let's chop it up next week, man. People, please like and subscribe, please, please. Love you, brothers, man. Peace, peace. All right, man. Y'all have a good night, y'all. Thanks for watching.